Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Linkcast. This is the Job Bomb Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of December 15th. I'm your host, Dr. Cynic, and joining me today is Nubarama. Hi. Fuck you. Durin. What? Happy holidays. That raw damn it! Oh my god. I hate you, you so much. Merry I hate you Christmas so is politically incorrect. You need much. to be more inclusive of other holidays. And the listeners will find out why I hate him next week. Thurbleton is also joining us today. I have a new microphone. Yeah, that actually sounds, fancy. sounds good. Sounds fancy. Which microphone did you buy? I bought a Yeti. Blue microphones Yeti. Like for me, me, Durin, Shin Boy, and for now your Thurbleton. suggestion. Yeah, we all have the same microphone now. It's fancy. Yeah, like pretty much and the only me. microphone. Don't forget, you don't forget New Brahma. You don't have you do not have Blue Yeti. I, I want a Blue Yeti. So, you're, you're not you're not part of the club. <laughs> Shit. Maybe you can get one for your religious holiday of genericness. Kwanzaa? <laughs> yeah, sure. That one. They celebrate that in North Korea, right? Yeah. Kwanzaa. Well, well I, it's unofficial, and I, I guess I shouldn't be talking about it. So I guess the the whole holiday season has started, so uh, for many. At least I read it thinks. Ho, ho, ho. Merry uh, as, as I'm, looking, resident I'm, retail I'm looking at my boy, Christmas tree. I can tell you that started back in Halloween. Because <laughs> I set that up. <laughs> against my will how how has the like the retail space been Thurbs <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's peak week so luckily after this we just get the crazy people who you know procrastinate to the last minute um, I'm one of those mean, people I still haven't bought my aka business. Americans right <laughs> but yeah it's like, it's like I procrastinate but I also I, I also just buy everything through Amazon so yeah um, but it's fun yeah, to Walmart the weekend. I know I, I don't even go to Walmart unless I have to at gunpoint. <laughs> uh, I hate Walmart on, on a normal day. Yeah. Anyway, I says to Mabel, I says, um, it's, yeah, it, it's starting to die down. I can actually start playing games again and have fun, but it's been just a crazy past few weeks. Okay, has there been a nightmare story? Um, the only nightmare story was just like, again, back in Halloween, uh, when we were setting everything up for the first time. After that, I just uh, did my best to not work during the daytime. Right. Granted, I still worked like six to seven days a week unloading trucks. But right, as, right, like the day we set everything up, some old geezer comes up to us and just says, like, we should be ashamed of ourselves what? for setting up Christmas that early. What? Um, See, I heard about that on the because, well, no, no, like, no, that show. That was your my, like, my boss had the best response. It's, sir, we're only setting this up because you guys are buying it this early. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait! Is this a, is this like a, a thing? Like, what's what's wrong with setting up Christmas early? I don't get it. Yeah, uh, it, it's more so like like especially when you're talking about setting up Christmas. Like we're, set, a, we're setting up. We're setting up before holidays the before the holiday in question. Yeah. Okay. Like, granted, there aren't a lot of Thanksgiving decorations, but still, it's that idea that you are already throwing Christmas in people's faces before Thanksgiving has ever even happened. In fact, three weeks think, before Thanksgiving. I think this was actually on the news because it's so frivolous. Um, like People are like, okay, it, it's too soon to put up Christmas songs on the radio. And there was like this huge survey about it, and then it was so fucking stupid. Which so is hilarious stupid. because uh, the, yeah. the week after Thanksgiving, I decided to go looking for Christmas music because that's my cutoff. Like, I don't like listening to it before uh, Thanksgiving. Okay. But after Thanksgiving, like, I'm totally okay with it. We went to go look for it. I literally could not find a local station that had Christmas music. It turns out the country station is the only one that play, the playing Christmas <laughs> music in my in my city up till Christmas. Mm. Nobody else. Nobody else, really. I had the weirdest thing happen. That's it. Thanksgiving's uh, like not even. It's in November. It's not too far from Christmas. It's like no, a it's month. month. Yeah, yeah. It's not too far. I don't understand no. the point. Like, if station. it was in October or something like that, maybe then. But no, it's in it's in November. I, yeah. I have a nice little story that uh, the, the, any video game in, enthusiasts that listen to the podcast might enjoy is, uh, well, at nighttime, we just, you know, make use of the Wi-Fi at work, and I listen to Rainwave, which, if anybody doesn't know, it's just they, they stream without commercial or anything video game music, and you can listen to just straight, like, games, OC remixes, or chip tunes, which is 8-bit versions of, like, the old Nintendo classic songs. Right. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, I was surprised to find out they would throw in a Christmas song done in 8-bit. Oh. 
That's I, that's pleasant. You told me about this, and I, and I was like, that is the coolest thing. I need to find all of that music. All of it. I just need yeah, it yeah. in okay. me. I don't know. Because... The, what? The, one, the one annoying thing is the, the method I have for listening to it. Um, I can't figure out what, like, who's singing or what. I just, I, I can listen. I can listen to the music. It's, it's with, it's through my iPod. No, and, as in singing yeah. with eight bit singing. Well, no, oh, I'm sorry. There, I'm sorry. Playing. There's no singing. Okay, in any good, of cool. Okay. All right, that's fine then. But I, I was the, gonna the say. performer <laughs> or composer would be the word I should have chosen. Sure, mm. but. Don't you guys have a thing for Christmas music? I I I love, I love Christmas music. Yeah, I, I I love the song Chipmunks Roasting on an Open Fire. I put a <laughs> bunch of songs onto my phone that were Christmas related, and they're gonna go out like at the end of the holidays. But I'm just keeping them on, listening to them like every once oh, yeah. in a while. Oh, yeah, like, I, I've been listening to it pretty much every day since the day after Thanksgiving. But I think I think it kind of ruined the it ruins the atmosphere because there's no snow on the ground. It's just really depressing. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you guys. I, I, my, Fuck my, you guys. my windows are open. My windows are open in, in my living room because it was too hot right. in here. Like, what kind of shallow, un, like, non real Christmas is celebrated without snow? Fuck you I'm guys. Serious. <laughs> Only, f- like, it doesn't deserve to be called Christmas if there's no snow on the ground and it's cold outside. Yeah, just, just curious, what's the temperature right now for you, Cynic? Oh, Jesus. I mean, let me, let me just, like, like what's, what's 33 the degrees today? Celsius currently, which would be. 93 degrees. A 30 33 degrees, degrees okay. which would be about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or so, something like that. Good lord. Is, is that, like, how humid is it? It's very humid. I am a pool of water at the moment. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Cynic, if, if, to make you, if it makes you feel any better at all, uh, right now it is about, you know, um, what, about 8.30 or so my time? 9 o'clock? Right. 9 o'clock my time. Um, it is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That is ten Celsius. Oh, I would we're love talk, that. We're, talk, we're talking December. I would love it so much. This is well, it's pretty like winter time, and it is it is fifty degrees here. In um, like b- before I moved, I used to live in Indiana. It it got it got like up to to what was it? Uh, yeah, my conversion rate is derping it. Yeah, it got it got up to like thirty three Celsius, nice. and it was really humid. Yeah, it's in the, the worst summer, right? Not in the winter. Yeah, in the summertime. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like Indian hovering ha- around three Celsius here. It's, to be clear. It's, it's no... Uh, I, I think the worst place on Earth has to be like the, the south in the summertime. Just because it's got the most amount of humidity. Yeah. See, but in out west, like in the prairies in Canada, it's generally like 40 degrees Celsius in the summer and negative 40 in the winter. Oh, I'll tell you though, where it's... Dry... I'll, I'll let you know where it's really cold though. Mm-hmm. In Lion's Arch. Too early. So too fucking soon. I, 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 oh, uh, I was going to ask, <laughs> what are you guys doing for for Christmas? Uh, how are you? Is, is anything special? Uh, there's a funny story because today my friend my friend invited me to like a Christmas party, and I'm like, but but that's on a day where where I'm uh, recording the Lincoln cast, so I don't I don't think I can come. But then I came to the realization. We're not, um, we're not, first of all, the first realization <laughs> that we're not doing the Lincoln cast next month or next week, and yep. the second realization. Is how sad that is. Like I, I have to record an internet podcast, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to skip out on hanging out with people. Sorry, and then yeah, oh, yeah. So you going to a Christmas yeah. party? Is is the moral of that story? "Quote unquote Christmas party." I don't know how Christmas it is because there are a lot of Jewish people there. Not that I don't like Jewish people. I'm just saying. <laughs> I was gonna say I can't celebrate Christmas without the Christmas tree. And if it's at a house of a Jewish person, where's the Christmas tree? Just, just bring a dreidel with the Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So, but what? Do, you're like 12 years old. What do you do in I'm a Christmas 12 party? Years old. Well, it's like a birthday party. We play Christmas games. Like, um, uh, one second. <laughs> you, you got nothing. Dude. P- pin the tail on the reindeer. <laughs> pin the tail on the reindeer. Reindeer I last, pinatas. I think the last quote unquote Christmas party that I went to uh, back in high school. Uh, me and a couple other guys just ditched out and went to an abandoned asylum and tried to break into it. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out there was a dude that lived there and he had a billy club. And uh, Ooh, wow, that's wow. weird. I like your Christmas parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, do you, I don't know. I don't uh, know do you plan to kiss a lady? Do you, do you uh, have a lady? Uh, you... Oh yeah. 
my friend told me there were going to be real live ladies there. And I'm like, yeah. I'm so really sad for you. Home. Yeah. <laughs> right I'm, now. I'm bringing my inflatable ball doll. Except it's a different one. So well, it's no, like, you're going to leave, leave her at home so that, like, you know, when nothing happens that night, um, she'll be there waiting for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's like coming home to Ready my to lady. Be unwrapped. My inflatable lady. <laughs> this is really sad, guys. God damn I'm it. hurt. I'm I'm depressed now. I'm so depressed. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, what else? Oh, no Christmas tree at my house, despite the fact that I'm not Jewish and I used to have a Christmas tree, but just like yeah, you lied. Just for, fell out of use almost. Like you get the Christmas gifts, you go to Sunday mass, whatever, but no tree, no tree. There's no tree at my house this year either. Well, okay. How how does something that really actually has no it it has no out of- meaning outside of like because. I live with my dad, and that's like two people, and there's no point in getting. Yeah, uh, so it's exactly the same thing that happened to me. So my my mom. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have one. That's like that. Yeah, my, my mom and sister are going to India for Christmas, so that that I there's just me and my dad, and there will be no tree. I don't think. I'll oh, you would dad should come over to Canada and ha- <laughs> hang out with me and my dad. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I guess we didn't really have we didn't have a Christmas tree until we had our son, so I I could see that, I guess. Yeah. It just like it it's like bringing it down to the basement. The thing is, I'm pretty sure we <laughs> still have a Christmas tree in the basement. It just Yeah, we have one in our garage. Uh, so. basement. I don't really want to go into the Oh yeah, we and we're living in the world of plastic Christmas trees, just to be clear here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Fuck by no Christmas tree. No. I, I can Christmas trees grow in Australia? Uh like do do they have Christmas tree farms? Like, I bet they could if we tried. <laughs> Cuz we do have we do have really? cold areas, but I just don't think anyone gives a shit, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like hearing all about those holiday traditions like a long time ago in Australia, it kind of made me think about how like depressing of a place Christmas must be Dude. living in a place like Australia. So I'm not going to do much for Christmas, but the day after Christmas is when the Hobbit comes out here. So we're going to watch that. Oh, really? Yeah. It took that long? Yeah. Despite living like next to New yeah. Zealand? It's one of those. Is it just because New Zealand doesn't like Australia or something like that? Maybe. I don't well, no, know. Isn't, isn't it usually the other way around? Like, don't you usually get the stuff before we do? We usually I actually do. assume something that was made in New Zealand would come out. Yeah. 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 We, we, we usually do get stuff before you guys. But uh, in this case, it works out because we're essentially attending the equivalent to um, not, not a premiere, but it would be fancy. Like, the, the, the cinema dresses oh, itself. Yeah. Up. Well, um, it works out except for the fact that I'm just going to ruin it for you. No, it's The Hobbit. It's oh. been out for like a billion years. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? But the, oh, but the Hobbit, like. Smorg's not in it. Uh, Surprise. I, wh- who's not <laughs> sure? Smorg is not in no. this movie, I don't think. Well, it shouldn't be, anyway. That'd be stupid if he was. Um, was Maybe saying? they packed all of the entire but, book into uh, one. For New yeah. Year's, which is just after that, I'm, me and my friends are have booked a um, like a three story house. In between three beaches in the middle of nowhere, it's gonna be awesome. Wow, you guys gonna have a, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. What are you gonna, gonna say? say? Something really inappropriate. No, go I'm ahead. Gonna say this is the no, guy. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> there will it's be fine. women there, but not none that they're taken, and I'm not interested in them either. So <laughs> it, you're be, not interested in women. Okay. It, it'll, on, it'll be it'll be sad for me and like two of my friends. The other two will at least be bringing their significant others along. So it'll be fun. Tarkin, it'll be fun. Tarkin it will be going. That, that, we is we are going to try to get that man laid. For the significant other people. Uh, he, let's not talk about Tarkin's love life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> So yeah, beaches in Australia is how I'm doing New Year's, which is, which is I guess, oh, is pretty cool. That's really cool. The, yeah. like beaches and beaches and Christmas or New Year's. Yeah, it's, it's like a different. beach house is okay, but going outside and and that's fucked up. It's gonna be like really a. Fun. I'm not sure if it's. I think it's on the waterfront. I'm pretty sure it's on the waterfront. Wow, if that's not, nice. it's, it's a maximum of oh. 50 meters away from the water. Um, it's gonna be good. Meters away. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's really good. Anyway, thermal thing. What are you doing for Christmas? Um, I will be probably doing a Skype call with the folks back home, making sure they got uh, gifts I'll be sending them Aww. this week. Oh, fuck gifts. Yeah, it's crunch time for me. I'm the one who's procrastinating yeah. in the last minute because <laughs> I got to get this stuff mailed right away. Jeez. Um, to be fair. What? Okay, okay. Let's let's discuss what gifts we're giving to other people. Well, it's, it, and so people are like, oh, why isn't he visiting his family? 
I had like the, the, I told him it's like, well, I can either visit you guys now or in spring, because if I put it off, that means I can pay for college this year. <laughs> oh. And like, they're like, that's a good reason to wait. We'll see you then when <laughs> when there's no work anyway. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, for Christmas, I'll probably I'll talk to them, probably eat some like, make some fancy meal. Right. Because uh, we, we'd always do that. We'd, we'd have some like fancy meal on, uh, not that fancy as much as just crap ton of stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> that's delicious. Yeah, that's delicious. Not so fancy, just like not out of a box. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I will have well, those are synonymous stuff that food. kills you. And I'll make a crap ton of bacon, cook some sausages. Oh, bacon! You probably just bacon. go all out and to make like you know French toast. Just use uh, Texas toast. What's what's Texas toast? Yeah. Really like thick, thick bread. Yeah, really thick bread that's like soaked in butter. Oh, and you, you stick it in the like you cook it till it's crisp, and oh, man. it's greasy as hell. It's delicious. And bacon and all oh, that. Uh, and then I will probably go out, drag some friends out, and go see Django Unchained. Dude, that, that movie's going to be awesome. That yeah. Be awesome. What Can't is wait. that? I, I, I don't know what that is. It's, is it directed by Quentin Tarantino? Or is it uh, produced by him? I don't know. I don't know. I think Basically, it's directed. Here, here's the layout. Uh, it's got Christopher Waltz, who was the bad guy from Inglorious Bastards. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. He's playing a German bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Who breaks out Jamie Foxx, who is a slave in Civil War times? Yep. And they have to kill Leonardo. I'm, I'm assume they have to kill Leonardo DiCaprio, who is a Southern slave owner. Well, and I, it's Quentin Tarantino uh, all over. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I, I yeah. need to see this then. Well, it's, it's something like nine and ten from everybody. I have a mental image right now. And when I saw the trailer, true. I didn't realize this until at the end when they said like, "This is who's appearing." Samuel L. Jackson is playing some like old. Black dude. Of course <laughs> he is. I don't even recognize him. Nice. Of course he is. I mean, it's, it's a fucking batshit crazy movie. Of course Samuel L. Jackson is going to be there. <laughs> uh, I just watched. I think there's um, something in his contract for that. Yeah. Man with the Iron Fists like two days ago. That was hilariously bad. Hilariously bad. It's got the RZA. If, if you, the guy from the Wu Chang <laughs> Clan. And he plays a blacksmith. Get it? And <laughs> in China. <laughs> no, is it China or Japan? Can't remember, but um, yeah. Essentially, it's like it's like a faux kung fu movie with people beating the shit out of each other in the most ridiculous way ways possible. Like, there's a guy who turns into essentially the equivalent of the Colossus from X Men. It makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. But it was pretty pretty bad. Good, like one of those bad good movies that I tend to love. Um, I'm excited. For- I'm watching what? it this week. Hopefully, it's not a letdown like you some hate people it. have said. Like, did did you like? I hate it. Really? Did you like? I love um, Lord of the Rings. What? I, wait, what? I, I, I don't know. About, you said you see The Hobbit. This oh, week. The Hobbit. I missed that. All right. I was like, you want to watch Man of the Iron Fist? It's crazy. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, The no, Hobbit. No, I hate Kung Fu movies. Unless they're like super realistic. <sighs> yeah, I'm the same way. I, I, I just, just want like, to know. The does... suspension of disbelief might be too high for those. Uh, what's the guy from Gladiator? I can't believe I've forgotten his name. Russell Crowe. Uh, Russell Crowe? Yeah. D- does he like know that the movie is a piece of crap and then just goes with it? Uh, for Man with the Iron Fist, yeah, he just he just goes with it. He, his okay. character makes no sense. It, it's, it's great. It's great. Now, <laughs> if you like bad movies, or if you can enjoy bad movies and like revel in their terribleness, it's fantastic. It's a really good movie. Yeah, so that's that's the difference. Like if it's a if it's a like bad movie that knows it's a bad movie. Yeah, like that's if it knows it's that batshit crazy and yeah. dumb. Like I'm okay with watching it. It's it's like the the kung fu movies that are just. Uh, like basically everything Jet Li has done, <laughs> those are the kind of kung fu movies I don't watch. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, I, I, no, I like, like them. Like I like them. Feet through the air to do a jump kick. I love it. Love it. Like no, sorry. Just yep, I'm totally on board. I love that shit. Anyway, uh, Duran, uh, you're, you're lucky last. What are you? What are you doing for the holidays this year? Uh, I am going to um, the in-laws on uh, the Sunday before, and then going to my parents on Christmas Eve. Um, and then we're actually just going to spend Christmas at home with, nice. uh, yeah, that's, with, with the, with the kid and the wife. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you, are you the kind of, of dad that's like, you guys can open it at like midnight before you go to bed for on Christmas um, or like, probably you- not really because, uh, since we're going to my parents on Christmas Eve, um, he'll be getting stuff from them. So he'll get his uh-huh. opening stuff out of his system there. Um, growing up, we never did that. Um, we always had to wait until Christmas day, but as we've gotten older and, and, you know, started having, 
um, kids of ours, our own, and started doing the Christmas Eve. The whole family gets together and everybody has their own Christmas on Christmas Day. We've kind of adopted that for all the grandkids so that they can, you know, open those things there. Yeah. Wait. So you're saying you will you will let him open the night before? Well, he'll get to open the ones that he's getting from right. the extended family. But yeah. But yours, no. Yeah, he, gonna be at home. He, he won't get. Well, do they still believe in Santa? Or he's two years old. Okay. <laughs> Does he have, so he yes. has an idea. I don't of Santa. Think Santa just... exists yet. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, he'll he, he'll get the uh, presents in the morning, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I I think it builds character, or and or oh, yeah. the I, ability Santa, to lie. Until I, was, or until I was in fourth grade. Because one of my one of my most successful lies was through Christmas. I opened it multiple days early. And then played with the toy, then resealed the box and put it under the Christmas tree, and then so pretended to be far, surprised. <laughs> I never went that far, but I did. Uh, the year that my parents got me a Nintendo sixty four, I was so certain that's what it was, but I I wasn't. That wasn't enough. <laughs> um, so I actually took the box out from under the tree while they were at work and uh, steamed the tape off of it. Nice. Wow. Open wow. it. And, and make sure that's what it was, and then reseal it without them knowing. That's that, amazing. That, yeah, well done. Exactly. So I, the tension of Christmas is character building. It either makes you yeah. like learn to live with waiting or learn to be... Or, or find a way to cheat. Yeah, so good. So good. It's good for you. I will say, <laughs> I will say on, the, on the subject of, of Christmas, uh, I, I did want to share one thing that my parents did for us one year. Um that I, I hope to do for for my son later on when he's older and can actually appreciate it. Uh, and that was one of our gifts uh, was kind of a, a joint gift. I have uh, three brothers, and uh, we're all pretty close in age, about six-year difference between the youngest and oldest. Um, right. And they had gotten us a uh, the, the like Ninja Turtle sewer playset. <laughs> awesome. It was like the fucking best thing awesome. ever. Awesome. But instead of just getting it for us and, and, and just putting it under the tree – there were they actually the present that we opened under the tree began a scavenger hunt around the house. Oh, wow. See, I've heard this. The, Some parents do this. The sewer. It's so good. So smart. But it sounds like so much effort. That's Wait, crazy. So so your parents actually left the gifts until Christmas under the tree? Yeah. No. They put fake they put like hint gifts on the tree. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, no, no, no. They, like the one that was under the tree for that was actually just a hint thing that led us to something else in the house that had another hint on it that led us so to something else. So the thing else. is like in, in my family, it was just the tree was empty and then the gift would magically appear on the 25th. Well, oh, see, what my parents okay. did is we would, have, we would have a few things under the tree that was from them. Yeah, right. Uh, exactly. And, and then Christmas Day, you'd wake up and then all Santa stuff would There'd be, be like a huge box there. I was like, whoa, that was there the day before. Oh, my God. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah. And we, oh, oh, yeah, that flip was out Because it's like you, your parents would have to give you gifts because it's Christmas. And then they'd have to give you gifts because Santa Claus came to town. Yeah. And that'd just be two presents. That'd be great, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it is great. Um. But but except I'd always have to start searching for my gifts about five days before Christmas to know that they exist, <laughs> to confirm their existence. I would never actually open it. So what you're saying is you didn't trust your parents to give you Christmas gifts? <laughs> no. no, they hadn't failed me once, but that, was, that wasn't enough. Trust uh, people, that, that, is, that is bad. Tells you the kind of man Nubarama is. But something else we'd be doing on Christmas... And what I wasn't expect, or I was expecting to do it. Duran was not. Is the giant bomb game of the year stuff that's coming up? I yeah. I I thought that was next week. I or I guess I this know, week when people are listening. They recorded it this week, and I I want it so bad. I want so bad. But now it's well, on the okay. Website. So so we I, we started talking about this before the recording, and I, and uh, you stopped me and w- wanted to save it for the podcast, mm-hmm. but like. My my feelings are kind of torn. I, I I'm not sure how to feel about it because I I want those so bad. Like I love listening to those mm-hmm. and and hearing them go through the process. But you don't want to hear but, what wins. Well, no, but there are at least three games or so uh, that I have not completed yet that I know they're going to talk about. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, the Walking yeah. Dead being one of them. Yeah. And I need to complete that game before they start spoiling it on there because I want don't to listen. They, to people. Don't. But don't I don't they put timestamps on like when they or do they no, not no, no, no. They they'll, should do they'll, they'll, they'll like warn that they're going to start talking about it, but should like timestamps on that. It would be nice. Here, I'll spoil it. They don't stop the zombie apocalypse. 
<laughs> I was going to say, like, we're talking about Brian Davis here. He ain't going to put some fucking timestamps on his podcast. No, I, I, <laughs> for me, my main thing with the Game of the Year stuff is I love it because it's essentially a free 15 hours of podcasts, which I, I love the Giant Bomb guys, so it's going to be awesome. But this year, my my list is like three entries long, and one of those entries I don't even want to be <laughs> Persona, there. Persona Guild Wars. Yeah, Persona 4, Golden, number one, with a bullet point. Guild Wars 2... And then a long space, then Mass Effect 3. I have, like, nothing I want to put in that list. Because I haven't played um, Walking Dead yet. But nothing else this year has been particularly exciting to me at all. I- I'm actually really surprised. I think mine's, mine's the um, Hearts of Iron 3 United States Sprite Pack. Right. Um, Victoria 2, a Great. house divided in Wars 2. <laughs> Sprite Pack as in those, you know, like, Monopoly pieces that yeah. represent... And, and it's supposed to represent <laughs> soldiers mm-hmm. and just a sprite pack making them look different and that costs four dollars <laughs> so i actually i'm, I'm actually and of course I bought this. um this year there have been a lot of surprises for me really in, in games that, that just turned out way better than i expected them to um most recently obviously far cry 3 like that okay. game that game shouldn't have been as good as it was especially coming off of far cry 2 and it's part of the reason why I kind of fell off my radar um, up until, like, right before release. That's going to be a huge uh, contender for Game of the Year, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dishonored was another one. Like, it, it's, it was ballsy of them anyway to release a new IP this late in the, the um, console cycle. Right. And to have then made one that's so compelling is even more crazy. Yeah. Um, so that one kind of came out of nowhere as well. Um, and then probably another big surprise for this year that I think is going to be on a lot of people's lists is Sleeping Dogs. Really? You think he's going to make lists? The dogs, he might. Sleep, I no, absolutely. I mean, it, it's not going to be number one on anyone's list. No. But I think it's absolutely going to be on, on some, some people's top ten. Top ten. Probably yeah, sure. might include it. Yeah. I, 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 haven't even, played... I, I haven't even played more than a few hours of it, but it's, it's such a good game. And, and the story behind it, like how, behind that game's development specifically, is I think one of the reasons why I appreciate that game so much. Because right. there are so many things that, that could have caused and should have caused – that game to either not happen or to be a fucking broken mess. Man, I don't. I, right. I haven't played any of those games, and the sad thing to me is it's not like I've lost interest in gaming because I just spent I spent what about two hundred hours on Persona Four Golden in oh my god in like four <laughs> weeks. That's <laughs> that is nowhere near as bad as I could have gotten. Like Skyrim, I did a hundred hours in six days, um, but. Like, I really so I, I still love games. I, I, just, uh, none of those games just named. Some games more it's than just, others. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the shooters, like, their open world what action I found games. Was, I in know, fact, man. like I probably found games that came out all, like not in 2012, but before that I played for the first time this year were a lot more memorable than games I, that came out this year and I played for some reason. Like I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed games that didn't come out this year more than they. The games that did come out this year. Yeah, my 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 game of the year is a game from two thousand eight. Man, I know I know what you're saying there. It's it's cra- <laughs> it's, cra- it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I I hope next year is going to be full of crazy stuff. I wasn't expecting I, that actually gets me excited. And see, I, I think I think next year's not going to be. I think next year's going to be a very uh, quiet year for gaming. I mean, I, obviously they're they're going to be console launches, so that's yeah. not going to be quiet on that end. Yeah, but I think in terms of like like compelling games, like big game of the year, top ten lists, like that's just say it's going to be a weak year next year. As a reference, on the Giant Bomb Persona 4 Golden Persona 4 Golden Threat or forum uh sub forum, mm-hmm. the top the fourth top poster is Self-Confessed Cynic. Yep. And the difference <laughs> the post is about like five. Wait, what I, really? Am I already up there? What what, what am I at? What you're, am I you're at? You're in here? The, you're in the top 4. You're at 112 posts. No way. Bullshit. Let me have a look. <laughs> you are at 112. So I I only started post? posting there when the game came out. <laughs> I was not on this list at all, and then yeah. So I, but I've been helping people. I've been like, hey, this is a, this is, I should make a good persona. Or I'm my, one of my what things on there is all the classroom test answers for the entire game. I posted up there oh, anyway. Lord. Um, oh, one question: are, are any of you doing Secret Santa of no. any sorts? Oh, okay. uh, no, actually, I'm not this year. Oh, Aww. I'm doing Secret Santa, and I plan on giving the person uh, Paradox Games sprite packs. Because it, it's <laughs> fun. Those are Why fun. would you? The minimum spending yep. budget is ten dollars, and the, the specific rule is: feel free to give them anything. You are so the single worst game. secret. Like, for example, 
for, for example, one of my one of the other dudes who lives in Nevada got a beer making kit from a dude living in the UK. Mr. You, Walks so bought someone a beer making. I I've opened I, I a Christmas present. People, uh, like I, I've opened like a, a huge looking box on Christmas that contained just stuff like they're just sundries, like socks and underwear and shit. <laughs> that was better than what you're giving this dude. <laughs> Look, you're look, a piece of shit. Tags, basically, and guess what? The person who's my secret Santa doesn't own the game. It's you're a, a piece gift, right? of shit. They don't own Hearts of Iron 3, but I'm going to get them Hearts of Iron 3 sprite packs that were uh, worth $10, of course. You're the worst. Is that amazing? It's the best. I feel so good about myself. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Dear Ray, what have you been playing this week? Just quickly. We got, guys have to get to get the uh, actual game at some point. Yeah, we have to get the actual thing that this is about. Yeah. Um, I've been playing uh, some, uh, but most mostly Far Cry Three. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Far Cry Three. I like that. Which, uh, it's that game is so good, and I, I don't even know what's going on in the story um, <laughs> because it doesn't really fucking matter. All I know is that I'm a goddamn ninja, <laughs> and who who the fuck needs guns when you got a bow? That so much of that game sounds interesting to me, but I I can't. I, I just can't. I, it's a shooter in the end. I, I know it's awesome, open worldy. You can blow up sharks with rocket launchers. That all sounds cool. Just not my kind of game. But I, there's plenty of coverage of that on the Jabba website. They love it. It's definitely you're definitely going to see it in game year stuff. Anything else to be playing? Um, I'm trying to think here. What else have I been playing? Uh, I've been playing a little bit more. Um, Starcraft Two, Heart of the Swarm. Not a ton. Right. Not as much as I would like to, but um. Not really. I, I've been really busy this week, so I haven't gotten a whole lot of playtime in on much of anything. I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Three. Uh, I don't remember if I talked about you that last that? week. Yeah. No, 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 no. I haven't. Um, it's, I was only playing it when my wife was watching, and okay. um, she keeps falling asleep. So <laughs> is that a comment um, on the I'm game, just or is just your wife's really tired? <laughs> She's really tired. Okay. Um, it, it also does have a really slow start, so that might be you know partially the game's fault as well. Uh, but so I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and just start powering through. I just I didn't want to play through that and Far Cry Three at the same time, right? So I just kind of chose Far Cry Three because and I was you just having came more off fun like Assassin's Creed Two Three. So like, there's no reason to like jump straight. Into well, I just came off of Brotherhood and Revelations yeah. back to back. Exactly. So, so I, I, I wouldn't okay be surprised if you're just out. Of, Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay taking a little bit of a break and and, and checking out some other stuff. Yeah. But, so I, I, there's there's a person here I definitely want to talk about what they've been playing with because I want to make fun of him. But Thurbleton, uh, what have you been playing this week? Is he here? Um, All yeah, right. I'm here. I okay. Just, <laughs> uh, as previously so mentioned, bully him. I've been working like I, I've been trying to get uh games of Cards Against Humanity and Ooh. uh Space Team. Yeah, that's the name of it. But it, like the issue is, is like there's only one or two people who have iPod like devices. They all right. have like cheap smartphones. Space mm. Team is possibly the most exciting game to me because yeah, it's what what like the main thing I'm really excited about is playing it at like packs or something. Well, because we're gonna, we're having, gonna have that like week long trip. That is gonna happen. We are gonna do Space Team. Hard. What's the max player count of that? Is it four or two to four? Four. All right. That's gonna be fantastic. What exactly are you talking about? I'm oh god. Oh god. Just, like if we play. Over Wi-Fi with each other? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, well, yeah, do, that, that is the that's the, that? that's the only way to play that game. To to be clear, you need you need to do it that way because I well you no, to be, but I mean like, is it going to be you, me, Noob, and Durin over Skype yelling at each other? Oh, that would be great. We should do is that. that what is this game? I don't do know it. what this is. Ex- All right. explain it for the audience. Okay, so, okay, I'll explain what Space Team is. Space Team is uh, it's a free app that you can get where you are you and your uh, other like two, one to three other friends or two to four people total are piloting a spaceship and you're going through these sectors and you each have a control panel that you have like you know dashboards and knobs and buttons to push and whatnot that's all that's all you've have, got you've just got a control yeah, that's, panel that's, that's all you have and then the upper section is a timer that goes from right to left and gets like bright red when you get closer to, to ending yep. that has an order that needs to be done most of the time somebody else has is like it's there it's the order for them yeah 
So and so it's constantly just just chaos of yelling at things to get done as you see the timer wow. finishing while listening for someone to yell at you to get your board done. Yeah, so like to be clear, it's like it it is Star Trek. It is riffing off Star Trek. You, you are yeah. on the bridge. Yeah, it sounds like the Star Trek game. Yeah, and everyone's shouting like like routing power from shields to thrusters, like that, that kind of thing is what you're doing on those on using your control panel. But because like 90% of the time it's on someone else's, the only way to do it is to clearly shout at the top of your lungs. At, at, <laughs> at, Cause you don't know whose it is. You're just shouting. Everyone's just right. shouting um, for them just, to do yeah, it. Yeah. They're shouting commands out to nobody. <laughs> yeah, nobody exactly. knows who has what. Yeah. And so you're just shouting the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, and, and then the best the part is like, oh, I have that one. Yeah, the exactly. they'll throw one in that is actually a command for you. Yeah. And Absolutely. so you're yelling at, who's got that thing? And God like, damn oh, it. I have it. I should fix it. And then, like, panels will, like, fall off. Oh, yeah. And so yeah, you gotta, like, you gotta, like, like, turn the device and, and you get it back into place to get it to go back on again. And yep. It's, yeah. And then yep, ooze falls that, down. And like, you level have to one it is that when level two hits, they start throwing stuff at you. Like, the uh, like the panel will fall off. And so you have to angle the, the iPod a yeah. certain direction to attach it and then, like, hold your uh, thumb on it to get it to stay in place. Yeah. Or ooze will come down. You have to wipe it off in order to press the button. Yeah. And then, like, there's a static thing, which I, I've seen, but I haven't actually, like, had it happen to me, so I don't know how to fix it. Yep. That is but the coolest... Well, there's two cool things. When you go into hyperspace, you have to flip it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> but everything's still upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, like, reading it, like, I don't know what this says upside down. And then also, when, you, when, when an asteroid's coming... Everyone has to shake the iPod That's at cool. the same time. Yeah, everyone has yeah. to shake because like the whole time you see the little ship at the top of your screen is moving from left to right, and you can see like the, the thing, like a general idea of what's going to happen in the future. Like, if the asteroid's coming, you'll know. But yeah, it's all about that bar, that bar racing towards the left, going red, and you're just like, oh fuck, we need to get this done. Who's got that thing? It's it's great. It's great. It's like the coolest multiplayer game this year, in my opinion. Um, I didn't realize I had Wi-Fi. That changes everything. Yeah, yeah, it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Okay. There's, a, there's a video in Giant oh, Bomb of them playing it like right next to each other. They're just like, yeah. standing around. Playing yeah, it. Well, yeah, I saw that. I didn't realize that we could play it like like that. We could all oh, connect online. I've never done that before. We'll, we'll see if we can. We will see if we can. I've got an iPad around. Noob doesn't have an iOS device, do you? I don't think you do. No, I have a. I have Android. Yeah, I, we'll 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 figure it out. Anyway. So that's what Thursday playing. The last person I, I wanted to it's, hear. Uh, from. I, I do want to add on just on what I've been up to. Uh, Go ahead. I have still been reading that book that I talked about like which one weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> the 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 uh, you forgot the title. Of, uh, it's the Blueprint for America, I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's. I'm still reading it. I'm like 150 pages in now. It's just. Every time, like I set it down and then like pick it back up, I have to like retrain my brain for like, okay, this is where we are in this point of history. And with like fantasy books and whatnot, I can speed through those because they're all just using the same like content over and over again. Yeah, linear got, story and and the story yeah, is repeated. Yeah. This I, is I'm not used to reading these kinds so of books. So clear, this is the one which is like uh, history, but told through. Does it, no, what was it again? It's it's uh, a guy who's been working at the Pentagon for like. 20 years now or something right. but basically he he started working at the end of the cold war right and has been working ever since on just like what what the uh basically taking an observer standpoint of like this is how the navy reacted to it like it just all the different governments oh cool and then how we can move on to the new uh type of it, world right because we're we, during the 90s and 80s we were still in the this is still a cold war right guys <laughs> And then when, like, the Desert Storm hit, we're like, we need to take care of all the crazy shit, like, shit happening all over the world. When it's been going on for, like, all during the Cold War, all the, everything was still going crazy. We just weren't paying attention. Right. And now we're getting out of that mindset and being like, okay, this is what we need to do. So, Dude, you were reading an interesting book, weren't you? It was something... Um, I, I've, I've read a little bit of it. I need to get back into it again. Uh, it was the one you were starting to describe. Yeah. Um, that is... Uh, yeah, it's a history of the United States um, told via, like, uh, diary entries from people who actually lived it. Yeah, that sounds... Oh, is, is that... Wait, what is it called? Uh, it's called The People's History of America. Yes, that book is great. Never, I've, heard, but I've heard good things about that book. And, and this... Yeah, I, think, I mean, it covers books. 1492 to present, and present being during the Clinton administration. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, I finished reading 
um, Cold Days by Jim Butcher, the, the most recent oh, novel in the Dresden Files. It was great. Uh, it was great. Uh, nice. Great book. I've been reading a book too. <laughs> I don't care. New Barama. Um, let's see. I've been actually playing a lot of games. No, 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 no. no. Um, Specifically, I, I've so I've had to. I still beat anything of the podcast, even though I haven't been on very much in the last couple of weeks. Right. Um, a particular episode a couple of weeks ago came up, and I, and I was. Uh, I was I was putting it together and making sure everyone was in sync, and I heard your little segment of it, and I just burst out laughing. So you found Alan Wake scary? Oh fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't like I'm the kind of person who gets if I'm alone and the game is dark I'm scared. If if it has to do with darkness I'm scared. I get creeped out by Diablo two. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Look, man, it's the fact that I I don't think even it's the darkness that's scary but the fact that those dark monsters they don't die very easily and i can't aim in that game and there's no like effective way of fighting bad dudes and then i get really scared <laughs> and then i decided to play another scary game today and oh what were you play metro 2033 oh how'd that go oh, so good see i love metro 2033 it's a fantastic game there it, it's a little rough around the edges but oh, overall yeah. it's a really great game mm-hmm. um and that game again it's not the fact like whenever i'm fighting people in the darkness and even if they surprise me it's not that scary but the second mutants come out and they're simply hard to kill that's when it gets a little bit scary for me see for me with metro anything that that is that is creepy is more so the environment it's like that game is the creepiest when there's nothing around i'd say just the mutants in general not because they look scary but simply because you think they're dead, but sometimes they're not dead, and then they just charge at you. Or there's this being... really weird physics bug where <laughs> the mutant dies while it's running, and then it launches super speed its body at you, and you <laughs> think you're about to die, but it's really just a dead body. <laughs> I don't know. It's some weird physics bug where it just launches bodies. That's that game, yeah, I think I've seen that one. Gave yeah. me the feeling of being overwhelmed, which is pretty cool. I, right. Yeah. Being, I don't like well, It's being... cool because it, it combines this, the ideas of, of being overwhelmed and also being isolated. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but I I just I just need to say because Alan Wake is not a scary game. That is an action game. I'm telling you, that game get you get overwhelmed by a lot of those dark spirit dudes, and you, you're you aren't really of, doing the places where they're like infinitely spawning. If you're right, hanging, and out. they never tell you you're infinitely spawning. I just want to pick stuff up. I want to find <laughs> more manuscripts. So, so okay, okay. The thing is that like when you realize that, that that's starting to happen. My mindset was, okay, fuck these manuscripts. They clearly don't care about <laughs> you know, giving them to me that much. So I'm going to keep going. And I'll assume that they won't put a manuscript in an area where there are infinitely spawning enemies. If there are, too fucking bad. I'm not going to grab it. Yeah. And, and I think it's like you're a quitter. I'm not a quitter. So I keep on doing that and I die and then I get really – I'm not a quitter. I recognize bad game design. And <laughs> <laughs> not even that. I think that Noob just has an extreme excuse. lack of survival instincts. He's just like, oh, yeah, everything's going to fucking hell around me. But there's a piece of paper <laughs> over there. I need to get that. But those there, manuscripts tell the future. a coffee thermos. I got to get it. <laughs> well, I mean well, it's not there's anything I learned thermos? from Slender, it's – when shit is crazy, just keep looking for pieces of paper. Don't try and leave. <laughs> the thing is, the thing, it's not even just collectibles. You know those like uh, cans of beer that they have like stacked up. Like when things are infinitely oh, yeah, spawning, yeah, yeah. I rather th- sometimes I've had this choice between shooting something that was really close and about to kill me, or shooting those cans for the achievement. I shot the can. <laughs> I died. I just reload the save. Were you playing this on hard yeah. or something? I, dude, that game I, was not difficult I, either. I was playing on normal difficulty. You're, you're just really shit at games. I was, I was playing on PC, yeah. How, how, how do you have a problem aiming? That <laughs> game is so <laughs> I played through like three quarters of it on the 360 before the <sighs> PC version came out. And then I switched to the PC version. Like, this is like a trap to play this. I don't like, I don't like aiming on third person. And that's, that's, I'll reserve my judgment on that. And fuck you. That game is scary in some parts. <laughs> Fuck you. I, 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 I do want to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, what? what no, go ahead. I, I was about to change topic to something else. <laughs> no, I was, just, I, I was too. I was just going to quickly point out there was one other thing I did play that I totally forgot about, mm-hmm. um, and that was uh, The Secret World. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, they, got, they got rid of the subscription fee on that, so I hopped back in there again. They really? Yeah. Yeah. How crazy is that? All the time it, it down not only did they get rid of the subscription fee... They took the uh, Guild Wars 2 approach to uh, free-to-play. So you had to purchase the game 
which is currently thirty dollars. Um, but there is no sub fee, and everything is unlocked to you. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, actually, it, it, Guild Wars Two model. I might buy this. For I'm good. playing the shit out of that next year. That that is it's, it's, January for me. This is the way that game should be. Like it is a good game, but not fifteen dollars a month sustainable. That's good. That's this is but, really. But good. at the same time, they are also taking. Uh, now I can't say that they're taking the Guild Wars Two approach, or if Guild Wars Two is taking their approach to this. But they're they're similar to what Guild Wars Two is doing. They're putting out monthly updates for that game. Oh, adding like new that's pretty cool. Stuff. Huh? So. That's good. Uh, this is they're good. Gonna, they're going to be adding a new zone. I Move, believe moving the industry forward. Good. Good on you, person who develops Secret Worlds. I don't know who that is. <laughs> so um, speaking of right, monthly but, updates, I guess we should just use that to get to move on. But 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 my, what 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 do you I, have? I didn't, fin- I didn't finish. I, I played Diablo two, a lot of it. <laughs> and um, you speaking know, of monthly updates like, and and Diablo, using that to move I, I on. Read a book. Wait, I read a book. Um, I read this book called Peace They Say by Jay Nordinger. It's a good book about the Nobel Peace Prize. Darbleton, what's happening this week in Guild Wars 2? Uh, lots of stuff that I will preface by just saying my favorite game that had uh, third-person shooting was Oni, which is an old Bungie game. But anyway, Guild Wars 2 updates. I like Marathon. Yeah, it was after Marathon, but yeah, okay, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was right. before the Halo it days. A game? Yeah, it was Mac, Mac and oh. PC, I think. Oh, because Marathon was Mac. Yeah, it's really dating myself, but uh, and anyway, Winter's Day has happened. Thank you. Along with many other interesting things, <laughs> including right. something on this podcast, or should we not talk about that yet? Eh, whatever. But they, I, they, I, they, I, uh, I think we've missed the window to plug it. Yeah. Are we? I think we should have done that like at the right at the we beginning. Should of the show we should have we should have planned this out a bit when more. When people are still listening to this. But um, to be clear, we didn't speak with him about anything to do with Winter's Day, like pretty much at all. Well, we did ask him that single question about did you do that jumping puzzle, in which he answered, No, I did not. And that was the end of it. <laughs> so to be clear, um Josh Foreman, arena net environmental designer extraordinaire. Um, graced us with an interview, which will be going up next week. So for the Christmas break, it's um, like more of joining us on a podcast episode. Yeah, it was. It's like a full two hour, two hour twenty minutes, something like that podcast, mm-hmm. where we have an arena that dev the entire time. He like, chimes in the Hobbit, and he was great. It was a fantastic interview. And yeah, we, the plan is to put that up for episode thirty four. It's going to be great. I hope you guys enjoy it. So look forward to that. Um, I made a new friend on Facebook. No, God no, but the, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin it, but there's like there's information in there that has legitimately exclusive. not been heard anywhere else. There's actual <laughs> exclusives about Guild Wars Two. To be specific, like, not, not just like his preferences on Bat vs right. Knife, which does come up. <laughs> oh, but, no, that is in there. Yeah, that is in <laughs> there. But was that like legitimate Guild Wars, Guild Wars, and Guild Wars Two exclusive info. So to tune in next week, that's going to be awesome. But um. So yeah. Don't spend time with your family members on on the holidays. Um, listen to hey, let's, be, let's be real here. Anybody who is, they probably could use the two hour break. Yeah. <laughs> or or just while you're at the in laws, sneak the like you know the the one earbud in, hide under your shirt or something, and then just keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you were right. That's what I'm gonna do? I I listened to it. It was, it was really good. Anyway, so terrible thing. Anyway, Winter's Day has happened. Thank you. Yep. Um, Tix, the toy maker, is just, you know, he, he set his airship golem for cruise control. And he's going to all the different cities and then ending it in Lion's Arch. And amazingly, a, a sunny beach area is suddenly covered in snow, which is really weird. 2012, man. Yeah. 2012. Was that they, your they, fucking well, Winter's well. Day, like, summary? I hate you. That was terrible. What? So winter, winter's in, oh my god, winter's here. <laughs> It's so awesome. So like, I, okay. Winter is here. Say, sir, if, you're, if you're referring to uh, Lion's Arch, there are snow, flying snow machines flying around dropping snow on Lion's Arch. That's how it happened. There, that, you can go there and see them. There's so much crazy stuff. Like, I only logged in for – because we, we recorded the interview yesterday and I was like just fucking – Literally changed. as Winter's Day patch went up. Yeah. Right. So, we, so that, that's probably why we didn't ask him too much about Winter's Day. But like directly we, after we that, I was know. tired. 
so I played Persona 4 for like 12 hours and went to sleep. <laughs> oh, um, I went back to Metro 2033 and got scared <laughs> because I played it while I, before I went to bed and then I had a nightmare. So I, I hate you both. I went straight to work pretty much. <laughs> so I got up. I, 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 I went to Guild Wars 2 actually. <laughs> and and, and I, I jumped into Guild Wars 2 this morning and just to, to look at all of the, the fancy new art because I – for these holidays are becoming more about like oh look at Lion's Arch it's all pretty um then about the like just like the the, the events because I don't really I don't feel the need to sit in front of this computer because the good thing about a Vita and Persona Four is I can play it anywhere I can I can go like to the shopping complex and like play it there like Eaton shopping complex um you mean the mall no not the mall or I reckon like play it downstairs where it's actually legitimately cool in my house. Um, but to play it was to have to be in front of this goddamn computer, and I am I, get a laptop. I progress from like a pool of water to just vapor. I'm just a, I'm just a amorphous mass of vapor at the moment because it is so hot in this room. But so I, I jumped onto Witcher's Day, which is in itself kind of like weird that I'm, I'm sitting here in the summer heat looking at a winter wonderland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which I just, wish I could be in Guild Wars. Yeah, I was I was just so envious. Um, but yeah, it was great. Like, I. I Lion's Arch looks cool. I, I think... Okay, so which do you guys Is think Lion's look Arch cooler? Is Lion's Arch the only city decorated? Lion's Arch and the PvP areas have both been decorated. Okay. But, like, it's the same as Halloween. I don't think they... they. I don't think any company has the resources to turn around a Divinity's Reach and the other, like, home city's size worth of, it. like, just pure they did working content. They did original Guild Wars. They just did LA, didn't they? Oh, they did LA and Kanang. No, no, they did Ascal- well, no, they did Ascalon, Kanang, they did... Um, Dr- Drachnars, they did LA, they did Kamadon, they really? did all of them. Well, and to, and to be you fair, in like in WoW, they did you know do all of the cities, but they basically kind of they strung lights on everything. <laughs> you know what I'd like to see that I think would be really awesome is they do like they they like you know pull from some of the other holidays or and stuff like that. So like you know when when we do like Independence Day for North Amer- North America, rather than just say North America, we'll do like. That's the day the Char celebrate their independence from the Flame Legion or something. Okay. And, independence Day? You mean just in the U.S.? You mean Canada Day? Yeah, can, Canada, <laughs> Canada Day. That's, that's exactly or, it. Or, I don't know why they didn't do this. <laughs> you know, decorate the grove as a Christmas tree. No? Yeah, sure. I, that's, that's, that's actually right. an idea I'm surprised they didn't do. Holy shit. Yeah. That would be cool. That That would be crazy. Um... What was it? I'll just give but, Silvari like uh, a town. Costume. I really want a town clothes for Silvari where they're just strung up with lights. <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> and great. Kids are trying to put boxes under them. Oh, oh that'd that happen. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. So I was going to ask, which do you guys think was cooler? Did you do you guys like the Halloween decorations more or the Christmas decorations? Um, um in terms of performance, I prefer Halloween because Christmas kills my goddamn frame rate. Same. Uh, I don't- it doesn't kill my frame rate. It just everything's invisible <laughs> for me. <laughs> there's nothing there. Oh. It, it's just a desolate like, wasteland. Like, like, like in terms of, of looks, like winter by far it looks way more amazing. Like Halloween was really cool, um, but I feel like I don't. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just the preference of of the art style itself or the art um, they chose or whatever. But I, I just really really dig the the art style of the winter stuff way more than I did the Halloween. Um, I just wish I could actually move around through Lion's Arch at more than like twelve frames a second. <laughs> I, 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 I guess, re- guess lag is better than being invisible. I really enjoy the uh, like the work they put in for Lion's Arch uh, for uh, uh, Winter's Day, but I'm going to go with Halloween only because this they had a lot more activities that were like that had players running around too. Yeah, like they had the the exactly. costume brawl. I, I that was, was just agree. this constant constant melee by the mystic forge which was then itself a mini jumping puzzle to be part of the costume brawl so like the halloween thing was not only but the, was, to be fair the costume brawl was something that was added as a feature oh yeah yeah. yeah yeah absolutely but um that, i mean like that that definitely goes to the time it's just like w- when you had to make me choose i'm gonna go with that one yeah because right. it was the first one so that, that's it's always difficult to, to compete with the first one because that was the first time i've seen how like um lion's arch dressed up and pretty um, but then seeing the players running around and like seeing the like the pow and all that, the, the crazy like words over their heads everywhere, it's like all around me. Um, and the cauldron, I, I actually prefer the cauldron to the snow globe for the um, for the Mystic Forge. I think the cauldron looks cool, even though the snow globe looks pretty cool. Um, I will talk about how cool that snow globe is later. Uh, okay, 
<laughs> Duran knows why. Okay. But please okay. continue. Awesome. Um, but yeah, just, just, just I, 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 I like, and to me, I, I don't know, Halloween is more of a, a distant thing. I, we don't really celebrate Halloween here, so at least it's more like exotic to me. Seeing Halloween decorations. I, 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 you guys, I you guys don't celebrate Halloween there? Not really, no. no. All Hallows Eve? Huh. No, we do not. Um, All yeah, Hallows it's, just, it's a distinct yes. lack of, of Wicca in Australia is, is probably why we uh, don't celebrate Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, 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 so Fair Halloween's enough. just interesting. Uh, visually interesting. I, I, I kind of, you kind of know what's going to happen going into... Uh, so you've Halloween. never gone trick-or-treating? No. Oh, Aww. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I am I, so sorry. I, sure You've I. never gotten yelled at by some old man to say, get off my lawn. You've never had razor, ba- or razor blades in your mouth before. Yeah, I stuck into a- apples. Holy shit. Right. I just realized that, why is there so much cosplay hate if everyone loves dressing up for Halloween? That's because those are kids dressing up for Halloween. That's totally adults who well, dress up for Halloween. Th- th- there, are, there are adult Halloween parties. I mean... There is an entire fucking industry of slutty everything Halloween right. costumes. That's what I was going to say. Like, you say costumes, but it's just slutty cat, slutty something, slutty something, something, yeah. something. I mean, you could probably buy, like, slutty Kleenex box. <laughs> that is disgusting. Oh, no. You, you <laughs> clean your mouth out. <laughs> um, um, what were we saying? Yeah, so Halloween. I, I, either way, you kind of know what's going to happen coming into Christmas. I was still pleasantly surprised by a lot of the stuff there. I, 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 it's Christmas. Like, there's nothing not to like. It's, it is snowing, isn't it? Like, if you go into, into Lions Watch, it's a snow making machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely enjoying Winter's Day. I, I really like it, especially the events are on par with that like with the ones that we saw for halloween they're just right. a lot more polished right but in terms of like lion's arch halloween or winter's day lion or lion or uh, halloween just had more going for it right that said like also snow and things like that isn't something new in guild wars like there's a whole racial area dedicated to snowy winter yeah. areas yeah Halloween was completely unique in that sense. Like, it's like there's no warping Halloween into area. the PP areas and there being that like that green mist over everything. It was awesome. right. But I, I, that aside, I went to the Grove today and I, I walked up to like the like an, the edge, like this kind of cliff kind of area, and just looked at that gigantic golem, that floating golem. I was like, that is pretty cool. That that was that pretty. Oh, you mean the uh, um, the airship. Yeah, the air, the the inverted commas yeah. airship. It was yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. I, I can't and, wait till it gets to Rao soon. Yeah, that that would be pretty cool. And, and people can find out more, a little bit more about that airship in our interview next week. I'm gonna, I'm going to be dropping that all today because it's going to come up a lot. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be really cool. I I I, I want to say so. Who wants to start this the talk of? Because that's like the real talking point. Like, the can events, we start by right? critiquing the costumes? Because I've I've spent money on the costumes, and I feel like we should talk about it. Because I spent why did money you on spend it. money on the costumes? Um, because I felt like um I had to own it, and then the second <laughs> I pressed confirm on the buy order, I felt a strong, deep sense of regret, like I've murdered a family member. Or did something you ever buy like that, that little um <laughs> that anime figurine? Did you do that? No, I didn't buy it. Okay. All now right. that I think about it, that's a that's a pretty legitimate Christmas gift. Like, fuck you. <laughs> oh wow. I, I'm just starting to think about it. You made me completely forgot about it. Because okay. Of your like constant bullying and your hateful <laughs> words. But now, so yeah, holy shit. Equivalently, now now you have. Does it need to do anything fancy when you costume brawl with it? Um. Yeah. Basically, the, let me. I'll. I'm going to equip the thing right now. Um, so I was just waiting for this. Mm-hmm. The oh, first no. skill is smack with your scepter. <laughs> and what then is number it? Two, what does it look like? The, it just a smack. No, no, no. What, what's it, the, it the costume? There's no like. visual. Oh, the I costume? Um, I think it's very different from winter or the Halloween costumes, mm-hmm. or at least the Mad King Thorn one, as in it's just a simple costume. It, it looks like a fur coat that PETA would like boycott or something like that just like a <laughs> right. really furry coat with like a furry hat that makes your character look bald um it's visually nice but it's not cool it's not very like wow that's pretty cool kind of costume you're not selling um, me on this costume uh oh i know uh, hence i regretted this costume because the halloween costume took me about like 10 minutes to regret after i played around with it a lot but this <laughs> Oops, I, yeah, I, ne- I never regret, regret my- before i even wore it i, I, I felt never, the regret before i never I regretted my halloween costume at all 
Real, well, that I bought was, two Halloween. I, I bought both the witches and. Okay, the, so I just I just costume. bought the witches one, and that one. I, is I blew twenty dollars on those right. costumes. Um, <laughs> well, what the fuck was I saying? Right, I don't know. Like none of the <laughs> things are very cool. Like this costume is probably the most underwhelming costume out of them all. Because in the original Guild Wars, there were costumes like the Halloween costumes where you were no longer a person and you were something cool, and then just a person wearing a costume. So you wanted or, to talk uh, about the costumes so you could warn people to not buy the costumes. Is that what you're saying? So, um. No, no, I want everyone to buy it so I'm not the only idiot wearing this thing <laughs> and running around. So I, I, I want to reference back real quickly to uh, The Secret World because I, w- I would like to say, like, on the subject of costumes, um, because they did take the same approach that Guild Wars 2 did um, in, in terms of their free-to-play model and, and everything, one of the big things in that game is uh, costumes or, or, you know, the look of your character. Um, because all of your gear in that game is not cosmetic. Right. So... It for fighting, yeah, it's all like, yeah, exactly. Like, none of it actually shows up on your character, so like, they have oh, wow, really? Uh, yeah, none, none of your gear shows up as anything. Oh, other than weapons. so other is your character weapons. just naked? No, your character is in whatever clothes okay. you buy for them. Okay, so, like, what, what we have, what we have I'm in sorry. that, too. <laughs> I've played plenty of MMOs that, or well, not MMOs, but Japanese games where all the characters. <laughs> <are naked>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what we have as as town home, uh, or sorry, uh, town Fuck clothes you. in Guild Wars Two <laughs> is just what your characters are wearing in that game. So, like all of the the cosmetic gear that you're buying with real money, seems like it has a bit more use than it does in Guild Wars Two. Yeah, because the, the second you too. take fall damage in this game, good luck, your costume's off. That's it. <laughs> yeah, like and like who actually. Who or actually, go underwater. I'm close at all. Like, costume brawl was the thing that added some sort of use to it, but then again, costume brawl. I haven't seen fucking costume brawl in a long time. Like, what I, what I'd love to see happen is because like they're implementing all these options having to do with just like you know the the, the your outfit and whether it be combat or whatnot, and an option that when you go into cities, you can just automatically switch to town clothes and it just does it for you. Right. Well, the, the town clothes option is weird to me anyway because. In a game that already has um, a transmutation system where you can change the look of your gear to be whatever you want it to be, excluding legendaries, um, it's not like – like in MMOs before, like there was always a reason of like ha- having like separate clothes for that stuff because it, like you, you want to be able to see how powerful that person is based on their gear. And if you let them wear things like town clothes, you won't know that they are actually wearing like the top-end gear and they're going to kick your ass or something in PvP. Um Whereas in here, because there's already that that um, that system set in place to allow you to change the look of your gear to whatever you want it to be, that that isn't that issue isn't really there. So like the the reason like the reasoning for town clothes to for like to be non combat only clothing just makes no sense. Right. And and especially given their model, like I I, I want to um, think that like the reasoning for those clothes existing in the store, like that was intended to be a big money maker for them. Mm-hmm. But when you have no no incentive to buy it because you you're never going to well, see. I, it. I'm assuming no there are retard or I, sh- I shouldn't use the R word. <laughs> challenged people like myself spending thirty dollars on costumes. They're they're pretty much doing pretty well for themselves. Yeah, I suppose it's just it's unfortunate because there are some really neat things on there. Um, that I will never buy because I'm not going to spend real money on clothes I'll never wear. Because like the... Look, man, you know know what my change to town clothes hockey is? It's shift because I want to constantly be showing my clothing off. (laughs) Uh, Like, uh, the primeval armor is on there and you can use that. It's it's weird that there's a disconnect between like some of the stuff you can get on there and the stuff... Like, some people want to look like Frosty the Snowman. Like, why don't you just... Yeah. But, and, anyway, but the thing is, in the original Guild Wars, yeah, you could wear those fight, costumes as in combat. Did you not? Uh, I don't know. I don't combat. You could wear hats in combat, I remember. Because they were just a completely different set, and you could wear um, them over your clothing. No, well, it's like the, the full like, the candy cane set was actually right. like, weapons. Like, you could use those. Um, but anyway, we're yeah. talking about the smallest part of Winter's Day. Like, I, I, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I feel this sorry for you, Nubarama, but I, I, just I don't will. I will add in brief... I do plan on buying that outfit as well for my giant Norn, <laughs> purely to someday later make a pimp outfit out of it. Nice. Oh. <laughs> nice. Now you're just abusing it. So uh, you might be. Plus, you know, like this 
clothing opens up a whole bunch of RP uh, opportunities that I don't want to miss. So yeah, cybering and RP. Join me. I'm just gonna let you. I'm just gonna give you as much rope as you need, and and just let you keep going with that. Um, so the, the actual thing that that matters, in my opinion, when it comes to to Winter's Day, is probably the the events, right? That, that's why we're here. Not me particularly, because I I just like wandering around and looking at stuff. But that golem flying around, you actually do stuff with that golem. That that that's just that's not just there for no reason. Today it's parked in. What was, what was it? Uh, the Grove? Uh, it's, gonna be yeah, it's, I mean, it's in the Grove it's right the now, Grove, but it's, yep. it's just going to circuit through all the, the major, major cities mm-hmm. until it parks itself at L.A. I saw there's moving. There's going to be different stuff to do in there every day, right? From, uh, from yes. what I hear, yeah. Yeah. So so who's actually done? Like, I, I was inside it. I didn't go into the party. So I just like went inside, looked around, and fell to my death. Um, <laughs> as you do in the Grove. Well, there's a teleporter there, and it teleports you to this middle, and then I couldn't find a way to get down, so I just jumped off and I died. Um, but it, I assume others here, Thurbleton, you've done stuff, have you? Have, have you? Have you played? Uh, I, yes, I, I did run through the dungeon in uh, the so Grove. So is it a dungeon? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like it's. I think it's like five events, but it, it's it's its own instance. Cause, yeah, because it's it's an instant like you walk up to this like teleporter, and, and there is a, effectively a boss at the end followed by a chest. Oh, cool! Cause, yeah, there's a teleporter, and you are teleported to within the thing. Um, it's it's like level two. It's classified as like a level two instance, but all the enemies inside it are level eighty. Am I? Am I in? Well, the tar elementals. When I looked at them, they said level eighty next to the name, didn't they? I anyway, think so. Uh, it's, it, it, yeah, I think that's what. Yeah, I think. So, you start. It's, I think it's, they, do the, they do the same for Halloween as well. I yeah, it starts off like right. anybody up to level. No, it, it scales you down to level two. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, it's a thing. Like you actually go inside and do stuff. So what do you do, Thurston? Yeah. Um, well, it's like you start off uh, having to. Apparently, it's an airship that somehow has. I guess it's weighted down <laughs> by what they thought they'd ordered a ton of like bags of sand, but was actually full of scrit. Wow! And so there's just this surplus of scrit just running around on the this airship. So weird. I still don't understand how they got on, but they're wrecking his prized flying As scrit factory. Do. Yes, and so the first thing you gotta do is like you gotta like you know do damage control, stop all these oozes from uh, wrecking the place because everyone knows the Surins love oil based machinery. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. That checks out. Yeah, that checks out. Uh, yeah, so, sure. yeah, it it was actually one one thing I really like about the event is like we, we were like confused, like why is this not working? Because we we kill the ooze, put the like goo in the machine, and like the progress bar start moving, but then after a while it would go back to zero percent, and then we finally realized the ooze is escaping from it, and so it's like it's <laughs> pseudo timed. Okay, cool. Oh. Right. So you have to have people like going out, killing the oozes, bringing them back, but you also have people killing the oozes that are trying to escape from this machinery. Okay. Right. Um, it progresses and goes on through all these events and then leads up to uh, you have to stop like one of the robots from going crazy by beating its ass. So, and this but is all the, happening in like the winter. Like, how much of the winter wonderland do you see? Do, do, do you, you are not in the winter wonderland. You are inside his airship. Oh. oh so it's just like. And oh, hallways, this is something stuff everyone like needs to do. This is a may just be for the Grove one, but it's models of Tyria. Oh wow! That you can destroy. Oh, oh, cool. That's cool. And apparently, that's an achievement to destroy all the miniature models inside his airship. We were just we were in there for twenty minutes wrecking everything we saw, and we couldn't like was like we can't see anything else we can wreck. Oh god um, damn it! Because Josh talked about like he 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 dropped that. For us yesterday. Yeah, and I wasn't yeah. sure, like, what is what is he saying? I yeah, because he said something about models, about, about t- I mean, and, it, right. and it was, like, his idea to do that stuff. And we had, like, no idea, because it, it just happened. Right. Like, it just came out. So we had... Yeah, it, I mean, like, the, there's, there's like, trees that are, like, your size that you can wreck, but then there's also these, like, miniature things that are, like, these trees and buildings that are, like, waist high. Right. And you just feel like just Godzilla just smashing them. But is it, like, and, is it, like, Divinity's Reach or whatever? Or, like, what, what do you see? It's not that size. It's, like, you know, you, you'll see buildings, like, uh, when I did the the char zones for world completion uh going through like just the because everything is like this corner is the char, char area this corner is the norn okay and i would see like this 
outline of buildings looks familiar, like it's some camp I remember from oh, okay. one of the charts. Gotcha. All right, cool. Wow. And, and, and so, so, you, so you get to play Godzilla. That's pretty cool. Yes, you can wreck all the little <laughs> things you can't see the, the city points, but it's, awesome. it's very well fun. And a lot of fun. But, you, but you're not in the winter snow? I'm, I'm really crushed that you're not running through yeah. there. You run yeah. through winter snow and, and many other things. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Wait, so... Don't worry. To do, to do with As this? As I said earlier, we will get to winter snow. All right, so you, I need you to, to, to take me by the hand and get me there. So, so, wh- okay. wh- so what's this all about? The, the dungeon or the, the, the stuff in the winter snow? Just, just, just take me in that direction. Cause I have no idea what you're talking about. Go ahead. Okay. Well, it's, uh, that's all I know for the Grove. There's going to be different events in that same dungeon uh, as, the, as they progress in other cities. And I believe something, they said something about when it finally parks in Lion's Arch, you can do all of them still. So that's all we know about the dungeon. Right. There's three of the things you can it, do, that, and I it, know two of them. During, yeah, and the, well, no, I was just going to say, like, and the dungeon is, like, each of those events is based on um, whatever the toy is for that city. Yeah, like there's gonna be a different different toy each day that it's based on. It. Like 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 the Savar one, which I think is awesome, is a toy uh, Ventari, the Centaur. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I'm with you. Well done, Raven. For anybody who's like, how do I find this place? It says on the top right corner of the screen. Yeah. And if you ask us in Guild Chat, we will troll you and say some place that is in the far corner of the world. Because <laughs> we are horrible. <laughs> Yeah, like you can. It literally just says like if you've been to yeah. Ara uh, and followed that quest chain of events, it's it's kind of like that. It just does in the top right hand. Yeah, it's side like of it's personal screen. story. It shows them on the, on the top right corner of the screen. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the three other events can be accessed in Lion's Arch, uh, similar to if anybody did the stuff in Halloween. There's like little crossed flags on the map. Um, they're pretty much right by the Mystic Forge. They're really easy to see. They're on like stands and they're waving at everybody. Yeah. But the first one we'll just get right into is a jumping puzzle. Fuck you. It's not made by Josh, the guy who made the Halloween one. Yep. Though he did have some words of like, good luck, hopefully they won't all rage at you. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think after doing it, um, people won't really rage about this one. I think they did a good job. Uh, uh, I think they're just going to complain and whine about how easy too much into the jumping, the mechanic they have for time, because like with, with the Halloween one, it was a, like, evil is ascending in liquid form to consume you and all that. Um, in this one, it's more like you are losing your health slowly. So it's not that threatening at the beginning. It's more like, okay, I have to get these jumps and I have plenty of time. But when you get down to the wire towards the finish, you have like, you're at, you know, running on fumes almost of health. And um, so, but so do people with more health in the beginning have a serious advantage? I it's, it, I, I, it's it looks like it's percent based. based. Yeah. yeah percent I like based. percent and they balance it where it's you're not regenerating your health because you're in combat, but you have this constant speed boost. So right. you're running at what you think is traditional speed. Um, so like they, they do that well, and it's it's pretty easy. You, like after a couple tries, you can get used to it. The couple things I like when you do the jumping puzzle, look up because you will find you are inside the Mystic Forge. Snow globe. Shape- yeah, snow globe. I, oh, that's I cool. didn't even catch that. I saw the stuff and I didn't. I didn't catch that's where we. Oh shit, that's you, cool. It is, sn- it, it it is snow globe like. sep- exception. <laughs> snow well, oh man, get, out get, of get, get off this podcast. We're inside, yeah. 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 Uh, but the the, the, two, the the other thing I liked is um, you are like the the waiting room for because I'm just comparing this to the, the, the Halloween one. The the waiting room for the Halloween one, you would always just stare at the tower, and it was just like this this anger and bitterness about how you couldn't make up the jump and just staring at this like this tower of oh, hatred. It's like, oh, I have to climb back. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. With the other prep room for, for Winter's Day, first off, they have uh, piles of snowballs. So you can just you can have fun throwing snowballs at your friends while you're waiting for the people to uh, fall off or finish. Because it's, it's not time-based in the prep room. It's, pers- it's like this many people have, are waiting and, and have fallen. The other thing that I love is you get a bird's eye view of the jumping puzzle. Oh, oh yeah, okay. you can see where, like, okay, this is where I have to go, and this is like you can see the pathway, and you can see the people as they're trying to finish it, which is awesome. I think it, it's yeah, uh, like that's you get, cool. Yeah, 
it's it's really taking advantage of the fact that like you know it's because of the um programming i guess they they can't really give each person their own um instance but they they make it so you start off in two different paths so like the the minimum they can give you is like 20 people per like map it's already right. split down to 10 now cuz it's two identical identical paths right. that just merge halfway through when most of the people have fallen okay cool that, that's that's mm. yeah cuz again we we talk about this on the um on the interview that goes up you'll hear like some of their design decisions going into this but that's a really cool solution to some of the issues yeah. that we added with um Halloween that's that's pretty cool so what else is there so did wait so wait first of all uh, just just rewinding slightly was the dungeon fun the the dungeon I had a good time with it yeah cool. it was it, it was a little confusing at first but I I, I think because like I'm gonna want to do it um more and more as winter's day just kind of like progresses because I really want to get one of the toys which is a, a baby Asurin. oh baby wait, Quag- no you mean baby, baby, baby Quaggan? Oh. Yeah, there's a baby quaggin you can get. I think I think there's a better one, and you know what that is? That's the infinite hair styling kit. You know what? While that is classy, I, I'm, I'm okay with my wait rebrand. Infinite hair styling kit? Yeah. yeah. I feel oh, like that's man. infinitely more better than the useless little quaggin. I don't know. Okay. Every every time like the uh, the holiday comes, I, I love to check the. This the... game is about making your character look as pretty as possible, and that's why I spent thirty dollars. And I'll say this again. I'd be happy if that thing drops and I never get any drops in Guild Wars 2 ever again because okay. that's all I want. Just hair <laughs> all I want for Christmas, Arena Net, is that infinite hair dye kit or but, hair but, kit, whatever. But they're going to be like, well, we, we think they're going to have like single use hairstyling kits on the. Uh... No, they do. Yeah, there you go. So What's up? That was up like last week. Right. So, so you don't really, you don't need the infinite one. I guess you could have the infinite one, but. You could have the yeah. one in case you wanted, like, oh, I'm going to keep changing my hair every day. It's like day. having your own personal hair salon. Uh, mm-hmm, girlfriend. Mm. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, thank uh, you. That, that, Moving that is, along. Like, <laughs> any questions you have for the jumping puzzle? Or, I mean, it's, it's oh, yeah. straightforward and fun. And same with the dungeon. Yeah, right. it's definitely much easier than the last one was, but not so easy that you can't Freeze rail it. Through it. Okay. I, I yeah. guess the one tricky thing about the, uh, the dungeon is that it is too level, and... When you're on the sec- second level, the upper level, it's like really confusing how to get back through the method that they intend for you to. But it's all cool because they have a free waypoint that you could just go back to the beginning. Oh, free waypoint. That's okay. good. So I'll just be like, just use that rather than find the circle teleporter that they use because that's really hard to find. But you did that anyway because you're you're thermal. Yeah, I'm a completionist. Like, I have to know. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> Plus we're so looking for jumping you- puzzles yeah, the- aside. Jump puzzle no. side. The second of three events in Lion's Arch is uh, their, their PvP style event, and this was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a like I guess a U style map where each people start, uh, each each team starts on one, one tip of that, and what you have to do is fight in the middle to get this present, and then bring it back to your side. Right. And I believe there's one for every. Like I'm not too sure about this. I haven't done too much, but I know that. You basically get a kit, either that's randomly given to you or that's dependent on your uh, profession. But I just I got a rifle and just started piecing dudes and had a ton of fun. Interesting. All right, right. So so you, it's, it's a very it's it's simple like layout like design. You have to get this present back and then just use these tools. Right. And it's very simple based PvP fighting. But it's, that that means it's probably incredibly fun because if you get oh, competitive yeah. people on there. That could be pretty interesting. It's something I would love to see, can, like, just stay as, like, you know, they, they rotate between that and Beer Keg or something. Yeah. In, the Keg, keg Brawl is great. And this sounds like an interesting spin on that. It sounds like Keg Brawl, but with, with like, a twist. Because you get, like, a kit of stuff to do, right? That sounds, that sounds pretty cool. But, uh, so I'd love to see uh, Arena do something to, like, bring the town uh, activities. Like, you know, this month or something, you, like, do Keg, keg Brawl to get this... Fancy item, and it'd be cool if you were like forced to be in your um, town clothes. Let's just let's just mash all the problems into one solution. Um, I know, right? <laughs> just everything should be in town clothes. I don't see what the problem is here. <laughs> but yeah, so so those two you saw. Is there a third? Like, you guys are saying there, there is a third. I haven't done it yet. I just didn't get around to it. But I know someone who has. Uh, yeah, there that is a third. Is on this podcast even? 
Um, Dude, so the third one. Yeah, don't, okay, make, me, don't um, make me pause to noon. So my favorite part would... about costumes is the texture that they have. Did it. It was, Wonderful it's, texture. It's a very cool one that he'll tell us about now. Uh, it, it's it's uh, Bell Choir, um, is I believe what they're calling it. Um, it's basically Guitar Hero, though, which is fucking awesome. Bell Choir. Uh, so, so basically there are these, like, there are these circular um, platforms. Again, it's one of those that you're just kind of teleported to a place. Uh, there are these circular platforms, and in front of each one there's a snowman. And uh, before the event starts, you need to talk to the snowman, and you choose whether you want to play the high part, low part, or middle part. All right, and okay, it'll sure. Place you, it, it'll place you in um, in the middle of the circle a platform, and you are in control of a third of that platform. And on your um, your third of the platform, there are different colored slices um, going across that correspond to your one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine keys. Okay. Um, each of those numbers associates to a uh, um, a note. Again, we're like think, think Guitar Hero style. And so when the song starts, and it'll let you know beforehand what the name of the song is and the difficulty of the song. Um, and so when the song starts, you will actually see little uh, orbs coming down the uh, one of the colors. And as it comes towards the middle, there's a, a white line that it has to cross. And you need to basically hit the key associated with that oh, note. Oh, that's good. That's after good. it crosses the white line, but before it hits you. So and your score is not how well you do. And there's a whole leaderboard at the very end that you've done like I think it's three songs. Right. It might be four. Okay. Um, and at the end, you see a leaderboard of how everybody did. Um, and then and then it just resets and you do it again. Are these original songs or covers? Of yeah, that's songs? what I want to know. Is is this, is this music we know? Because one I care about, one I do not, and I, I believe you these are original songs. <sighs> but are they Christmassy? Are they Christmassy? I think so. I wasn't listening to. I didn't. I didn't have the sound up high enough, and I was on mumble at the time. Right. So I was just basically watching the things come down. Because I was gonna say um, it'd be hard for them to get the rights for a bunch Christmas. of the Christmas songs. Right. Um. I was no, really... no, but not really. You just make a cover of Jingle Bells or. Let it snow. You know, change two notes on it. <laughs> right. Uh, but no, it's, it's actually really, really fun to do. Um, yeah. it, the only unfortunate part was I, I did it um, just after we recorded the podcast last night. Uh, and there was a bit of lag problems, which really oh. kind of kills something like that. Yeah. Right. Those, those so are, that's that's time. I, I was really hitting notes and they were just missing. Right. Um, but other than that, it's it's probably one of the coolest things I've seen in an MMO. And I would – it's one of those things I, I really hope they keep it around after this. No, but the That's interesting it. thing was um, there's a lot of places in Guild Wars before this where there were playable music things, instruments. Yeah. I was just wondering when they would ever implement something like this, and here it is. Yay. I'll be in a different form. Anyway, so so those, those are the three main things. That sounds, so that's off day one of the uh, – there, there is one quick thing I just want to add just because we're on the subject of Lion's Arch. Uh, a lot of people saw like you know for the Halloween – the lion statue freaking broke, and we talked uh, a little bit about this with Josh. But oh, yeah. something I just love that they're doing is they didn't just bring it right back like magic. Yeah, yeah, they're building it up. Yeah. And so those who don't notice they, that that lion's art statue has been oh, it, it, people, a little bit. People notice it like they they it's like no, so oh, it's it's just rubble now. And then they oh, they're trying to build it, and then like now you can see yeah, they're they're slowly rebuilding it, and yeah. I hope it's like right. Comes back in February. Or Are we going to talk about um, the Christmas presents, like in the randomness? Uh, yeah, if you want to tell us about the, the what's this yeah, about? Because that, right, that, is, so, that and the snowman. Right. Uh, I haven't done the snowman, so someone else can talk about the. What snowman. are you talking about? But uh, what? Well, I, I have no presents, idea. What you're about. The sky. All right. So basically, um, I'm going to I'm going to take a short deviation from the costumes um, and talk about the other things on Winter's Day and mainly the thing is if you're not into events and you just want to run around and play your thing they uh, they have added randomly spawning giant Christmas presents that appear on the map randomly well they're not random but they have set places that they spawn in and basically what these do is you go up so it's not in your instance only it's like the in, in the entire game so you should, everyone can go up open the present and basically what would it do it would spawn five random mobs uh it's either the toy ventari script or one other thing i believe and basically it also spawns presents that people can pick up and these are um, mysterious christmas presents or something like that and basically what happens when you open them is you either get um, a crafting material like a snowflake or you get an 
let me see what it's called. It's called an ugly wool sweater, an ugly wool sock, or an ugly <laughs> wool hat. Right. And basically, if if you play Guild Wars One, these are like the candy cane shards or something like that. So these are currency you can hand in to get Winner's Day skins and other Winner's Day goods like consumables. Yeah. And um, like a baby quaggin toy. Or how much is that baby quaggin toy? Um, it's it's going to take a ton of wool, so I'm going to do the uh, dun- uh, dungeon. Right. Wait, no, it's, it's not a toy. It's a mini pet. Yeah, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. Um, so sort of. for the skins themselves, there are about there are a hundred things each. So hundred of either currency. So if you get more more of one currency than the other, you can trade in for the um, wool sweaters instead of the wool socks to get the skins. There, I haven't. Have you guys seen the skins running around yet? I haven't seen them. No. Yeah, but all, yeah. they seem like uh, gingerbread. We, we are two days in, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm at thirty so far, and I've I've spent about another thirty. Well, this is gonna go for a couple, like a, a week, isn't it, or a bit more? Wouldn't no, it? until January. Until January, 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 January so, oh, geez, okay, there yeah, you go. So this, yeah, they I, right. Sounds so like they see a lot of people running well. around with it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's the big collectible thing. Um, anything else regarding the collectibles? I think that's about it. Yeah. So, yeah, farm stuff with me. I've just <laughs> been farming the entire time. I guess just in brief, uh, the, the snowman thing is um, – it. You, there's, I think, three in L.A., and you can get this pretty easy with uh, just using overflows. Uh, but it's just you have to make a ton of snowmen to get one of the uh, holiday achievements. And it's just you see a pile of magic snow. Oh, that. Through, okay. And you commune, yep. just like you're communing with a skill point. And, and then- it's it's just like the pumpkin carving thing in terms of – Running around and collecting stuff. Mm. Anyway, but it's another thing to do. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, so our plan for today was to do the, to talk about the Christmas stuff, but since it's ongoing, I, there's just going to be so much more. I mean, we're going to get an opportunity to talk about a lot of it, are we? Because we know that next week is going to be the interview episode, and we're not going to be here for the New Year's, are we? I don't think. Like, Most likely not. It's, it's safe to assume we're taking that week off. And, and, and I'll, I'll do a podcast alone. No, you won't. Look you always say that, and you always fail. Like yeah, I, I'm still forward. waiting on your anime, anime podcast. But uh, do you I, that's any... just because I can't. There's Revan, and then there's you, and then neither of you have watched anime recently, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I was there's... watching anime yesterday. So is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Because I, I have an idea what, how to end out the show. But is it specific? Well, it's. I guess we can talk, I want to talk, talk more brief about on the uh, the world versus world updates. Oh, go ahead. Sure. Yeah, I don't want to go like too much into just like uh, I'll save the massive oh, yeah, we world versus just talk world about podcast it, yeah. for February. But they they made some some effort to try and show like you know the, the uh, people playing the game for Wov Wov that they are listening and they care, and to try and counter some of the trolling because they did they did a really good job fighting the the, the hacking and the exploits. But uh, let's see if I can find structure PvP. Uh, yeah, World vs. World. When uh, people would alt F4 out to sort of just deny people from doing the finishing move and getting loot, um, people were kind of mad really? about that. So, yeah, you people could do that. People would do that. Why? That's some so, people, so some people were pissed. Other people, other people were like, "Well, it takes the whole time for them to log back yeah. in and then load back into the map." That's so I stupid. Guess that's okay. But that's still kind of a troll move. Right. So Arena, it's like, we agree. Whenever somebody disconnects while in combat in World vs. World, they will be killed and you can loot the corpse. Oh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> that, that's so actually fair. So for the most part, yeah, sure. like, yeah, trolls are like, no. And then people who generally have you know connection issues are like, that is makes me sad. Well, I, it wouldn't be... Because like, the first time you, you die, you don't get uh, a broken piece of armor. You, you just get a uh, death penalty. Yeah. So it's fine. Like this is a victimless like change. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, th- then one other thing they added was it, it, this was kind of a silly thing, and it, it does make sense. Uh, so I'm really okay with it from a balancing perspective. And I actually had to deal with this from a defensive point of view. Is when you treb down walls or catapult down walls, and they they break. What you could do was just like you know, let's say it's got ten thousand supply, you know, in it. When someone puts two, what it's at zero the wall magically reappears. And so like people would like half a attacking force makes it in one person repairs it and then they're cut off until right. someone oh. gets back on the trip and keeps hitting it. Which by the way what, was incredibly fun to do as a defender. 
It was <laughs> yeah, it was very campy or like, all right, guys, let's push him out. And then like half the Zerg like makes it out to push push away the attackers and like one friendly person, I'll repair this door and oh, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> are, like the atta- the defenders are, are split in two. Yeah. Um, how it works now is you have to repair ten uh, percent of its health to get the wall to come back. Right. And the attackers can keep attacking that same area and that will do damage even though nothing exists there. So that does keep a balance and that keeps the fighting. Like it, it relies more on you have to actually drive the people out, get rid of the siege, and then you can repair. Mm-hmm. Or at least drive the people out and repair. And I, I had to uh, do a bit of this while fighting for one of the towers uh, earlier today. So I, I, I like it. I think it's nice. Okay. As, as, if uh, you'd be the person to actually judge whether it's a good call, like, uh, w- is that like is that a positive change? Do you prefer it that way? Um, I, I think it's a balanced change. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely enjoy, enjoy it more. I, I really hated the campiness of people just put two supply in and were sort of like cheating the system. They they knew they didn't have to repair it; they just had to delay it. So they would put like as few as possible to just buy themselves time. I guess right. the, this, this method I like much more. Okay, cool. Right. And then the, uh, the, the the biggest thing that's the most controversy is they added a – basically when people are completely driven out of a point, nobody really wants to go in there and fight uh, because they have to take back towers. They can't get any foothold into the map. They add this thing called a breakout event. And how it works is it's actually uh, a pretty low bar I think, it, which is it, – it's a good thing. Um, there's a char uh, commander who actually has a commander icon. Oh, cool. He's called like a, a siege master, I think is what he's called. But he just chills out at spawn when you don't have any proper points. Let's say you have people taking supply depots; he'll still show up. Um, but it's like he just he he shows up, and you have to like be close to him to register. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for ten people to gather around. And once they do, a timer starts from fifty, and then he summons his trusty Doliac. Everyone can get supply from the Doliac, and then he runs out uh, at a, like you know just below traditional speed, right? Uh, so people can catch up and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So what happens? What happens from there is he runs out to the um, the point, and I I saw bits and pieces of this because I was running um, buffer. I was trying to keep the enemies at bay, but he will just like once he gets up to the door, he will drop all the uh, seeds you need. And then there's a, a new event that happens of build up all the siege. Oh, that's cute. And what's really good is he drops arrow carts, he drops rams, and he drops catapults against the walls. Ooh. So, yeah, it's, uh, he doesn't put catapults against the door. He puts them against the walls where they belong. <laughs> Not that I'm angry at noobs for doing that. <laughs> right. Not that's you, really noob. Cool. Actual noobs. <laughs> well, uh, new, my, I'm always angry at noobs, but that, that's not. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, though, it's it, and and then what's what's really cool is he, the guy has a ton of health and really hurts. He's like he hits like one of the uh, super powered supervisors at the depots, sort Yay. of thing. So he he will knock people on the ground, uh, and he runs around. He's actually got pretty good pathing. I was impressed. Oh, cool! Um, but then then he also puts these. They look like guardian shields, like the the, the domes, right? Uh, on the siege that he that he has placed. Okay. Uh, while while the attack is going on, and anybody who's in them has some sort of buff that has to do with vitality boosting. All right. So it it definitely makes the people attacking have a bit of an edge to try and get that foothold back. So so it's it's that swing back mechanism that we were all talking about a couple like a month ago. Yeah. Um. So how we, this hasn't been around long enough to really tell what it's changed, has it? But yeah. And and, and the big issue is I'm not sure what the uh, numbers will be to get it to like a farming status, which has me worried. Is like right. uh, if defenders get X number of ballista, can they just roll the guy over before he gets close? Can people attacking not really care about the map as a whole and then just keep attacking, letting the point get taken back, and then just keep attacking again? Um, like, what if there's a, a respawn timer on the commander? He doesn't show up for another 20 minutes or something. Right. So but, those things I don't know yet, but sure. I'm, I'm generally, I'm pensively happy about this. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> Whenever so, they release stuff like this, it tends to get exploited and just yeah. like, yeah, but, uh, people try to find a way to cheat. So, so hopeful, but still reserved is what you're saying. Yes. Awesome. 
So is there anything else? Uh, that, that, I, I'm, I'm happy. That, how about how, what do you guys think about the changes to the costumes yeah. and structures PvP? And Wolves. Well, 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 not really costumes, but proper. Yeah, the, the PvP, the, the color, the armor. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. God, you uh, had my. Jeremy actually had like a, some pretty good talking points about this. Um, I, I I love the change. First off, um, so just explain it. Which which also so, okay. So the, if, if this works on Wolf uh, Wolf as well. Okay, uh, so basically the, the change that they made is that um, you know currently in, in structured PvP, um, you have you, your red team and your blue team, and it dyes all of your gear to be a solid color based on your team. And the change they're making now is allowing you to toggle whether that is on or off. Um, but Genius. they're they're doing it smartly. Because they're allowing you three different options. They, they have the base option, which is there now, which is that you know everything stays the same. Everyone on your team is one color. Everyone on the other team is the other color. Yep. Um, they also allow you to turn off um, colors for your team, so your team is all wearing whatever they dyed their gear to be. Yeah. Um, cool and the opposite gear. team is always yeah, and the other the opposite team is always single color. You know, be it red or blue. Mm-hmm. Um. Or there's the option to turn everybody's off, and everybody is just wearing the the their own standard um, color dyes, right? And that's like the best way they could have handled this. Like, yes, I know a lot of people the best have, have taken issue with this. Yeah, a lot of people like, have taken issue with with like, but, well, because they have this whole other progression for structured PvP to get this gear that you only get in structured PvP, and it looks really really cool until it's all blue, blue and red. Yeah, yeah. It just it, it takes away a lot of the epicness and a lot of the cool feel of this gear that they have what, made. What are you showing off? Now? Nothing. Yeah, you exactly. So, so it's it's cool that they're, that they're that they're doing that, and you can actually, and not even maybe so much show off, but just see it yourself. Like see yourself in that awesome gear, dying exactly. Only see it in the mist. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, 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 so it's, it's 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 not a lot of people have been asking for for quite a while, and the fact that because in my opinion. Um, if they'd only had the toggle to be blue and red or no one has anything, that would have been dumb. Because I think that the color differentiation is an important point from a like just right. a tactical point of view. Um, the milliseconds saved here and there are what wins you close fights. But the, the ability to have like the middle option, in my opinion, the best option and, is and there. And to point out that middle option is the default. The, the yeah. coolest option, yeah. That's what, that's it's the one where you can see your teammates' cool, sweet gear, uh, but the enemies are still the enemy color. That's awesome. That that was a, a perfect move on their part to put that in there. Um, and 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 I wouldn't like. It, there, there's argument to be said for um, not looking down on. I I I, I guess because this, this is like this is PvP. People are jerks. Um, there's definitely people out there. Who will say, "Hey, if you have it such that everyone, di- everyone's died, then you're playing it wrong." But in this case, if if you're doing it the one where you can see your team's colors and you can't see theirs, like they're they're died, the enemy team, um, let's just call it the middle option. If you if you trick the middle option, that one's cool, and that that's a legitimately perfectly fine way to play. And I'll, I'll go, yeah, that's that's it's great. I, I actually love this change, um, just to shut people up. Like in my opinion. Obviously, I'd prefer them to be able to have worked on like actual stuff that matters. So, like spectator mode, for example. But yeah, this is this is pretty cool either way. Well, I, I imagine something like spectator mode requires a lot more work and QA it's on their part been um, two months, than something man. like this does. It's, it's been months. I will kill At some point, you have to go. Hall, okay, so. it's been a couple of months now. I know it's a lot of effort, but this is like the number one thing that we needed. Um, but hey, whatever. That's it. Still, the game is still happening. This is the MMO, so it gets to keep evolving, which is awesome. And it is evolving. I'm, I'm so happy they made this change. They've, they've consistently made changes like the ones Thurbs pointed out and this one um, to continually improve the experience. What, what, what do you guys think about that? How, how do you guys feel that, they, that pretty much every month they've rolled out a significant improvement to what they've released with? This, I mean, what, what things can you say other than it's amazingly good? <laughs> like, it's not like you can say, oh, fuck, they're updating my game. I want it to be vanilla. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There are, there are people playing WoW that are running vanilla. Or those people who absolutely hate TF2. Hey, that's not vanilla or something like that. Yeah, those people exist, sure. But yeah. this is an MMO and, like, these aren't changes that are fucking you up. These are changes, you know, for the, your convenience. Yeah. Like, how could you not feel good about this? 
Agreed. Well, and it's nice that they are. I mean, you know, say what you will about spectator mode being in or not being in, and the prioritizing of of it. But it's good that they are clearly they're they're not just going through and making changes willy nilly or based on what they wanted to do or yeah. like they're clearly listening to their community and like community says they they you know they want this thing done they're gonna they're gonna make sure that gets done and yeah right. and they've consistently done that which is awesome anything else for the for the holidays we're getting on what two hours or so we want to i want to close this yeah. out they, sometime they soon. changed the name bag of gold into bag of coins from the complaints <laughs> did oh, they really and- yeah, I, th- I think they changed <laughs> something great. else to bag of jewels or something. There was a couple of, ch- couple yeah. of small changes. A, to item. Bag of gems to bag of jewels. And they, they added also the added like with gold. the black line uh, trading or black line chests, you have a chance to get, uh, well, first off, they changed the artwork of it. So it actually looks like a top tier mining pick right. rather than just a dinky copper one, <laughs> right, uh, right. which was nice. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a little thing, but they also added a heavy bag of gold that is only found in the uh, trading chest. And of course, this heavy bag goes anywhere from eighty copper to one point three gold. So it could really just be a heavy bag of copper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which it probably will it be. Be a heavy bag of coins, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. This this month realized how much Arena Net has fucked me over. So <laughs> I spent a hundred. Like I'm like, oh. What's this new personalized mystery box or, or present, right? Because it, it came with the new holiday in the store, and it was 100 gems. And that's like 2.5 gold nowadays. Um, and I bought it, and it gave – and it's like four personalized presents and two random dyes, it was. And I got two blue dyes and four ugly wool sweaters that I could have found <laughs> running around randomly on the map for about a minute. And, and then I – and I swore – that one day I will have my revenge. It's because it turned one. out to be exactly like Noob's normal Christmas. Like his real right. life one. Right. I, <laughs> exactly. Just four ugly wool sweaters and no girlfriend. <laughs> and with that, I, I, we, we, don't, we, we did this. Um, I was curious, how long have you been wanting to say, like, I, how long did you all have episode, that ready? All right. episode. All <laughs> episode. So, I planned it out so. from the start. Um, I, I'm telling you, there's, but there's going to be real girls at the Christmas So party. we had Thanksgiving a I'm while ago. I'm going to hold their hand. And me and Nubarama got to, t- t- got to say what we were thankful for. And I think the, the, the feeling of Thanksgiving, being thankful for things, even though that's not really what the, the holiday is about, um, definitely extends this whole period. And I want to end out the show. But first... The holidays let's, are about getting. We, let, let's have a chance getting, for getting. Durin and Thurbleton to weigh in on what they're thankful for. And if you want, what you really hate. Like what you really deeply yeah. hate in the world that you want to see change. So uh, either one, Durin. Are we talking Syria or are we talking in real life? Real, real life. life. Oh, Just okay, okay, general. okay. And you got? I'm gonna start with me. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, um, do, do, do you have anything? I, I hope you. Or I can I talk can... about more stuff I hate. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, I, can, I, you can fill. I can go really deep on this while Durin's thinking of something. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Um, I guess uh, to start off with the, with the good one. I'm thankful for. I mean, this podcast and and meeting you guys and in in turn meeting. Aw, you're my best the, friend too. I didn't say that, but sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like meeting uh, through you guys, I found the Giant Bomb community. I found like the Tested dot com. I found this awesome guild. Um, it's it's uh, thank you again so much for letting me be a part of this. Oh, um, great! Wait, so then, whoa, whoa, you found Giant Bomb through us? Yeah, I was. I I I. I heard bits and pieces about it but i didn't actually know about like the giant bomb i usually got most of my news from like total biscuit or ign or g4 or something oh, great. like that whoa okay crazy uh, yeah. crazy it, all right madness i know yeah what? before you get esquire <laughs> no 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 <laughs> forget that men's oh. or gentlemen's quarterly that was heartwarming but, uh, it, i mean i need you to balance this out is there something you absolutely hate hate yes and this is gonna get kind of somber but i i hate the cowards who can't admit that they have a problem and talk about it and instead run into malls and shoot people. Oh, geez. Wait, oh. has something happened this year? Well, I, I mean, there, there's been stuff that's been happening the past few weeks all over the, the nation, but in my, in the town I reside in now, Portland, Oregon, some guy just ran into a mall with a hockey mat, like hockey mask and an uh, SMG and started shooting. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, and then oh, there was also that, that event in, uh, in Connecticut on Friday as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, so I've been out of the loop. So I, this is – I agree. 
You guys are jackasses and cowards. Wait, do well, you and, 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 as, and as an extension of that, um, the media. Oh the yeah. Media. Oh god, fuck the media. Yeah. Why? Why? Why in this? I, yes, fuck, I agree. Fuck, but why? Because this is this and is, is fuck, fuck news. Bad, this is revenue for them. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not just revenue. It's it's more so. They're capitalizing on this yeah. as much the, as they can, politically yeah, and like, whatever. It, the, the the way that they just they, they come out like vultures when this stuff happens and the the way that they handle this is in no way professional and tactful. I mean, they, it, I don't, I don't want to go real deep into it because a, a lot of people talked about it and right. it, the discussions tend to go real dark places. But and this is not the whole. This is not the place. Yeah, for Absolutely, this. but with the whole Connecticut thing, like when, when I was hearing that, like that Fox News was interviewing kids who were there waiting for their parents. Like, the parents hadn't shown up yet, and so they were, like, over there interviewing the kids. Oh. Like, that's... Yeah, I wouldn't move on. That's, 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 just, that's just... That's just fucking... Yeah, that's um, way too far. But yeah, so it, it, this, is, this is a holiday about being happy, and anything that's against that, especially something this bad, it just pisses me the right. fuck off. Because, like, because seriously, we spend all year being jerks to one another. Like, if, if you think about it, if you th- think you're a jerk, everyone's a jerk in real life. Like, you, there's a person who falls down the street. I laugh. I, that's that's me. <laughs> um, but in this period of the year, you're supposed to be a little bit nicer. That's like, you know, well, peace and, and even, you know, give give us two weeks. Yeah. Like, come on. You, you want to be a jerk? You want to do you want to do heinous things? Like, not you have that, all year not, to do not, that. We're not saying. Go shoot people up in January. <laughs> which, but we're but, saying, you know. <laughs> don't do it now. <laughs> yeah, specifically. Um, anyway, thank you for that. Just double, any, anything else? I, I, I'm fine with taking a couple more. Duran, uh, do you I have believe, any? I believe, yeah, Duran's up now. We give enough time. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, similar to Thurb, I, I, you know, I, I was aware of Giant Bomb. I have been for a long time, but I, I'm definitely thankful for uh, Cynic wrangling me into this podcast as well um <laughs> because i definitely feel like had he not um i probably wouldn't be playing guild wars 2 right now anyway right because oh wow, really well because like the community i always joined prior to this were very finicky when it came to mmo launches and they would be just headstrong going into it um at launch and then like two months later there'd be like two people online ever but we i so got into mumble I've today and there was still like 18 people on mumble yeah doing yeah so it's really cool to, to actually be a part of a community guild that actually sticks around for the long haul. Um, and and I, I definitely don't think I would have, I wouldn't have even found the guild had, you know, you not wrangled me in and done, and done all this. So that's actually probably, you know, that's definitely something I'm really thankful for. Is there anything um, real, isn't there in real world, like life real world? you're thankful for family and kid uh, aside? Cause I, that's the easy one. Because if you ask me, parents like, "I'm thankful for my kid. He's adorable. He's two. Look at his pictures." But aside from that, <laughs> what are you um, I'm, I'm thankful my job ends next month because uh, this yeah. thing is soul crushing. That's that's crazy. Like, your your crazy schedule I'm, is nuts. I'm hopeful that I find another one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Absolutely. I, because new, I don't want this anymore. New Barama is easy. I still have yet to see. I've never, I haven't said thanks on that podcast. I've only like complained about things because I couldn't think of something <laughs> to remember. be thankful for, and I, <laughs> and I still don't have anything. It was such a fever. Oh, dream. I'm thankful for that. Um, Wait, noob, hang on a second. Are um, you telling me you are not thankful for the great leader, <laughs> the dear? I'm sorry, um, but <laughs> I cannot talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Right, I guess, I guess I'm thankful for. And uh, I'd like to yeah, plug, so <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> I'm thankful for one thing. I hate you. While we were recording this podcast, my, my wife went out with her brother to go hang out. And in the middle of hanging out, they went to Starbucks. And she grabbed me a drink and brought it back here before going back out again. So she's Aww. awesome. There we Aww. go. And with that, I'd like to say that we're, we're, we're going to do the obvious thing and say we're all thankful for you, the listener. And... I'm just gonna vomit no, I, a little I bit on the inside those. right now. Fuck you. And then, um... <laughs> thank you, Nibirama. Thank well, you. I wish you like my Facebook page. Fuck you. Well, except the 20 people who liked it. I love you, but the other X amount of people out there, maybe two, four Durin. more people that are to this. Do you have any plugs? <laughs> oh, plugs. Um, I, uh, I, I'm. 
I want to stream, but I can't. I don't know if I'm going to. So yeah, let's that's, that's we'll not set expectations and then fail to meet them, shall we? Yeah, well, because like I want to, but like I'm playing. What kind of jerk does that? that the game is already <laughs> very intensive on my system, so absolutely. I don't. Yeah. So yeah, no, 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 no plugs this time. All right, Thurbleton, any plugs? No. Um, no pl- no uh, streaming right now. I'll probably get back into it because I, I know with the uh, where I'm at with my legendary, I'll start doing dungeons again just to farm them in hopes of getting freaking lodestones. But I do, I, I will give a shout out to everybody who helped, like help with the um, the podcast for uh, Josh coming up next week. Oh yeah, just everybody who sent in a question, we used a lot of them. Uh, mm-hmm. We like we condensed a lot and just made these really well detailed questions, and he was impressed. Um, so it's it, uh, we have you guys to thank for all of that. So you rock. It, it sounded like he either had a good time or he's like great at making feel people or people feel better about themselves while being <laughs> on the podcast. Hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. You know, it's spend time with your, your extended family, your family, or, or in laws, or just listen to our interview once well, a year. Have fun with them. You know, you don't want to. Just don't. I mean, play, play some you, cards you against play. humanity with them. Play some. Yeah. What's it? Fuck space team. Oh, God, space, space team, team. I, yeah. There's Do no it. way in hell I could play Cards Against Humanity with my in-laws. But you can play would... Space Team. That's why this is awesome. But, but I will be playing Cards Against Humanity with my parents, assuming they get the goddamn thing up on their site. They say oh. it'll be ready for Christmas, but I'm getting real worried now. Oh, shit. Wait, Wait, the what PDF? are you talking about? No, no, no. Uh, the, uh, Cards Against Humanity is currently out of stock, but they have a note on the site saying they will have it up, available to purchase and have it shipped be- uh, in time for Christmas. Oh, right. Okay. So... Crazy. But I'm getting kind of worried because we're only a week off and it's still not up yet. Yeah, that's going to be so, a land grab. That's, that, that would be just crazy. I, I yeah, know. so I'm, I'm hoping it goes up soon because that's kind of plans for Christmas Eve. <laughs> and so, well, Nibirama, plug your shit. Um, your so I like to plug the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub, a hub where you play Giant Bomb or fuck, where you play PC <laughs> games with the Giant Bomb community. Um. Yeah, come out and play. Like this week, I, we played some Victoria Two multiplayer. Very fun. Oh, actually, no, that wasn't it. We played some Counter Strike Go. It was very fun. Um, and all of the other games you want to play on the PC. And, you and also, that in the like show the notes, Facebook so. page at www.facebook.com. So uh, yeah, so I, yeah. I, I, um, so with that, just, um, just it's occurred to me too. Like, I, get, uh, I guess I do have like, I, I, I do have one last shameless Nibirama. plug. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Thurlton. Um, Yeti, Yeti microphones, great for podcasting and such good quality that you can hear me typing on my keyboard this entire time. Yeah, it's it's, it's, that it's spiteful, or is that not that it was annoying to you guys? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running around lines, Arch. So the big plug is for next week's episode uh, going out with the, the week of Christmas. I'm not sure what day yet. You guys have to edit it and all that. Tell but, your um, friends. Tell I, your I, family. I keep saying Christmas Eve, and I'm like, wait. So then it kind of has to edit that. I don't know that I should be saying that. Yeah. It at some day during the Christmas week, um, what we go up is a two hour plus long inverted commas interview, more like just like a straight up normal episode with Josh Foreman, um, environment designer extraordinaire. He's worked in a bunch of games like Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2, you know, ones you've heard of. Um, it's great. It is was it great, family great friendly? Great episode. Is that episode family friendly? We swear a lot. Uh, I think we swear every now and then. It's, right. Okay, yeah. so not, it, not is it is it may not be family kids. friendly. It is sailor it is, friendly. It is, it is definitely probably our friendly. cleanest episode. Yes, yeah. I will One confirm. Time I was about to swear and then I held myself back because because <laughs> apparently Josh Foreman is an adult. Um, yeah. So that, that guy yeah. does. That, oh yeah, yeah. Just to be clear, no swearing in his part. It is, it is all on our side. Um, like, well, that guy's a gentleman. He was, he was, I kind of felt bad. I kind of felt like, oh, I was, love I love his response though. I'm not sure if it was it was before we recorded or not. But he's like, I, I don't yeah, know if I'm used to people swearing. I do work on making video games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like you make a good point there, sir. Yes, well, the, yes, well said. Oh so, yeah, it just occurred to me like like they you know everyone will see us on you know on here next week with that with that podcast, but. Like we're not going to be doing another one of these until January. Yeah, right. it's going to be a while. I, I'm going to see you guys yeah. for uh, well, anyway. Well, you know, we'll, 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 we are all grown ass men we'll except for our new Brahma. Oh. So what? we'll do what? Get a girlfriend, new Brahma. Yeah, and with that, like Facebook page. Thank if you, you want to be my guess. girlfriend, like the Facebook page and send me your resume <laughs> for being my girlfriend. Huh. Uh. Hey, hey, cynic. Since I probably won't see you again until the next podcast, enjoy the Hobbit. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait. Anyway. What? I can't enjoy The Hobbit, Thurb. I thought we were best friends. You've already seen it. Okay, okay, no, wait. No, we, we should do this differently. 
right, we're going to do the goodbye thing, but we're all going to do the goodbye at the same time because the last episode, well, second like last episode of the year, last real episode for the year. Oh, so, like so ever, if you know. So, if, what, are, what are we going to say? Fuck happen. off. See you in 2013. Oh uh, no, no, we just say goodbye. Just goodbye, like that kind of thing, you know. All right, so five, four, three, two, one. Goodbye. Goodbye. That was fucking cheesy. Fuck you guys. You guys both didn't. I hate you. I said goodbye. I said goodbye. Did you? I said goodbye. So yeah. I only heard. I only heard I, third. I might have said go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs>